Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to our first ever St. Lotus Presents here on the St. Lotus MDG channel. I'm Eric Levine. Darian Stennett. And today we're going to be bringing you a draft, a uh, vintage rotisserie draft, uh, run by some of the local judges here in the St. Louis area. So we've got some, some veterans, we've got some first-time vintage rotisserie draft players, but a lot of people with a lot of magic knowledge, and it's going to be a very exciting draft today. Darian, what are you, what are you thinking about? Are you, are you interested in any of the new cards from Crimson Vow so far for this format? Well, this is my first time being a part of the rotisserie drafts, and... I don't think Crimson Vow is going to be up to par with everything we see in you know the rotisserie drafts. Yeah, usually there's there's one or two cards from each set, you know, that each of the new sets that really get in there. Sometimes, you know, if there's a set like War of the Spark, right, we'll have yeah. just this this swath of planeswalkers sure. that Modern becomes relevant. Too. Sure, yeah. yeah, exactly. Any any set that is uh, is aimed at sort of a a. a a modern or an eternal format yeah. in any way. Commanders, commander sets sometimes have a couple of gems, but yeah, usually with the modern standard sets, it's like there's a couple cards, but it's not really that exciting. Yeah. But it looks like we've got um, we've got the draft order set up. So uh, we've got Redbeard here in the first seat, followed by Patrick, Chad, Luke, Pete, Mark, Kevin, and finally Heidi. And of course, for folks new to vintage history draft, this is a draft where every card that is vintage legal in Magic the Gathering, which is pretty much every card, Almost minus, every you know, card, yeah. 15, 20 cards, something like that, yeah. uh, that are printed in black or white border. Um, so so there's tons of stuff out there, lots of possibilities. And what we're going to do is a snake draft for anybody familiar with fantasy sports, things like that. We're going to be starting with Redbeard. He's going to get the first pick. We're going to go all the way through to Heidi. And then Heidi's going to get two picks in a row. And then we're going to come on all the way back down to Redbeard. Everybody's going to get, I believe, 46 picks today. Um, and, of course, every card is only pickable just one time. And you can add as many basic lands to your deck. Just like any draft, any limited format, you're going to want to play a 40-card minimum deck. You know, put some basic lands in there, call it a day. Um, now, Redbeard has an interesting choice. That it's, it, he's going to have an interesting choice, something that's been debated a lot recently in the world of Vintage Rotisserie Draft, which is Black Lotus or Ancestral Recall. Those are kind of the two perennial first picks. Where do you land on that? I'm a big fan of Ancestral Recall. I think it's good in any state of the game, beginning, end. It's great. The only negative I see is it f puts you in a color. Yeah. That's the bad part. Now, blue. Back, it looks like the... Uh, we, we lost the stream there for a second. Sorry about that, but the picks are, are flying fast. We've got Black Lotus for Redbeard, Soul Ring in the wow. second spot for Patrick, and Mock Sapphire for Chad. What do you think about that Soul Ring pick? I mean, it's a powerful card. Patrick is a commander player at heart, so, I mean, he has seen that card time and time again be awesome. Um, I'm worried he is not going for the Power 9 early, which concerns me, but, hey, I mean, I consider Soul Ring the 10th power soul ring, soul ring definitely a very powerful card certainly something that uh, i think people are going to are are, are going to be happy to have um i am surprised to see it go uh before ancestral and we've got people locked pretty hard in on some of these powerful yeah. artifacts time vault for luke mox jet for pete um i love to see mox jet going nice and early of course a lot of the black discard spells in this format very strong i sure. think Thought sees, uh, you know, Inquisition, all that good stuff. Exactly. Some people think that some of the two mana discard spells are good. I, mm, I'm kind of off that. But <laughs> interesting to see Ancestral Recall falling all the way down to Mark. I know. Do you I, think he'll take it? I think he's played this long enough. I think he knows it's a good card. But I think everyone just seems like they're just trying to establish their base. Like I don't think maybe they're not trying to grab the powerful cards. Maybe they're not trying to commit to a color. But I don't know. Recall's uh, good. I would commit to Recall, but I'm a blue player, so. Yeah. Me, if I were Patrick, I would. I think I would have probably taken Ancestral Recall True. in his seat. Me too. Um, I do think Soul Ring is a defensible early pick. I usually yeah. see it go around 5, 6, 7. Um, and I'm surprised. Mark takes Mox Emerald. Kevin following up with Ruby. And that leaves Heidi potentially to wheel Ancestral Recall in another yeah. powerful blue card. And there we go, Heidi picking up the Ancestral Recall, taking what everyone left behind. <laughs> that, that's, that's insane. Um, it's usually like one of the first picks Yeah, taken. That's crazy. I'm glad uh, Kevin got the Ruby. We all know he's going to want to go Mono Red today. Like, it's a Kevin classic. Kevin went, uh, went into an artifact deck last time I saw him at St. Mm -hmm. Lo Lotus number 7. 
Heidi following up the ancestral recall with Dak Faden, the greatest thief in the Ooh. multiverse, ready to steal all of those moxes and time vaults everybody else is playing. I love Dak Faden. I think Dak Faden is a fantastic uh -huh. card. I'm surprised to see it go quite this early, but I'm not saying that's wrong. Let's sure. be clear. Dak Faden. Let's see if I can spell. Very good. Here's Dak. That's gotta, just where he's going to live right now. Got to pick two Ragavan from Kevin. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not surprised there. And I saw it last, uh, the VR7, VDR7 or whatever. And it's a powerful card. Ragavan, incredibly strong card. Very big fan of it. If you're going to play a red deck in this format and you're going to attack your opponent, I think Ragavan is one of the essential pieces. Oh, yeah. Mark following up the, on the coveted double Mox start, Mox Emerald and Mox Pearl. We'll see if those he lets those set his colors at all or if those are just fast mana for him. Vampiric Tutor for Pete. So Pete probably looking to go into some kind of combo, combo strategy yeah. here. What kind of combo? If, if, you had to, if you had to set yourself on a combo deck, what kind of thing would you be thinking about in, in this format? So my problem is, is I've always been a Storm player. Oh, Nazi yeah. Tendril and Legacy. My problem with this format is Singleton is really hard. Yes. For Storm. It's very difficult. Um, but for this format, I'd probably do some sort of like show and tell, sneak and show, tinker, blight steal, that type of thing, you know? That's probably the combo I'd probably go for. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a, a strong way to approach things. I also yeah. think that the Time Vault deck is a strong way to approach combo, well, as we can see Luke here picking up the Tinker to go alongside his Time Vault. Oh, yeah. Uh, I drafted a Time Vault deck in my first ever VRD, I believe, in the very same seat. Oh, looks like uh, the sheet is mad about how we've spelled Narset. Parter of Veils, there we go. Problem solved. Narset, another one of the most powerful cards in this format. Easy to combine with something like Wheel of Fortune or any other similar yeah. effect. Uh, just to break the parity of those. I draw seven. Uh, you don't. <laughs> no, even just like in a round one, we're not even done with it. I can kind of see where everyone's going so far, except for maybe a couple people. I haven't seen Redbeer's second pick. Mark is just grabbing good cards. But like Chad seems go going into hard control. Heidi seems like she's getting some good control cards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kevin in mono red, and then Luke maybe doing some combo. I mean Tinker, I've never seen played fairly, so I'm assuming it's a combo. Is what oh he's yeah, doing with it. I mean Tinker, Tinker's going to be used. I, th I think traditionally in the time vault decks in this format, Tinker's used to you know find the other half of your vault combo. You know you oh, go yeah. off with your vault key, yeah. um, or you or you grab a backup blight steal something sure. like Worst that. Worst case, you blight steal them. I mean that seems good. Patrick picking up Demonic Tutor, leaving Mana Crypt still on the table as Redbeard picks up Strip Mine and Time Walk back to back. Interesting to see Strip Mine and Time Walk sort of uh, yeah. living in the same apartment here in uh, in Redbeard's deck, but we'll see what that looks like. And I love Time Walk. I don't. I always get underwhelmed by it. Yeah, it always seems like you know, dis you know, discard it, draw a card, untap all your lands. You know, it's good. Yeah, but it doesn't seem as powerful as we see it in like decks like Vintage and stuff like that, like actual Vintage format. Absolutely, I I strongly agree. Time Walk, I think, fell pretty far. I think Time Walk fell further than this in the uh, VRD seven last time. Time Walk, round two. generally, yeah, yeah, averages round two. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Um. Patrick picking up Dark Confidant, looking to be another black drafter with the Demonic Tutor, uh, Pete on the Vampiric. So we've got two players who are going to be vying for some of those powerful black cards in the next mm. couple of rounds. Chad going full control, picking up Teferi, Time Raveler, and Luke. Oh, sorry. Solar Ring's already been taken. Does he know that Mana Crypt's still yeah. out there? I was about to point out, did you see Chad's Teferi? Like, yeah. You know, he, he's going more into control as I see it, and that's awesome because I'm also a control fan. So, you know. Likewise. I can, now, Chad, Chad's going to need to do some, some serious work to make sure that he corners the market on those solid counterspells, solid pieces yeah, of early interaction. Absolutely. That's very hard Ooh. to do. I recently did a VRD in Discord, ended up 3-4 with a uh, blue-white deck, but I had, mm. I had to pivot out of some mistakes I made early in the draft, and it looks like Chad may be angling for a better version of the deck that I played there, so that's good to hear. Mm. Somebody picking up, picking up the banner for blue-white control, you love to see it. 
I mean, absolutely. I'm. I really hope he's able to get those counter spells because, like, I think that's a core part of any you know blue X control deck. Absolutely, cards like Force of Will, Force of Negation, obviously yeah. very powerful in this format. Free counter spells are fantastic alongside mm -hmm. you know some of the cheaper pieces of interaction. Yeah, spell pierce. Uh, just traditional counter spell. There's there's quite a few options, but it's the the cheap stuff that really makes it happen. Mana yeah. Vault here for Luke. Well, I mean, there's so many fast decks that we're probably going to see during the matchups. You're going to need those early, early game interactions yeah. to be able to handle it. And it's important to be able to cast something like Teferi and still have meaningful interaction. Say you turn four, you play a Teferi. Mm. Um, you want to be able to have something like Spell Pierce or Force of Negation in your back pocket to be able to combat their turn four plays. Wheel of Fortune for Pete. We may be looking at a Storm-type strategy for Pete here, or possibly something like Reanimator. It's hard to say at this point. Mark yeah. continuing to pick up just solid cards with Mana Crypt, and Kevin laying claim to Lightning Bolt early. I wonder if he could have floated that a little further down the list. I, I don't think it's a top priority for a lot of people. I think he could have grabbed something, you know, more necessary for what he's trying to do or something that at least is going to get picked early on. Yeah, I, I think Lightning Bolt is underrated because creatures are a much more important part of this format mm -hmm. than people seem to understand, at least yeah. at first blush. Absolutely. But I don't think... I, I think Kevin could have left Lightning Bolt on the table for a few more rounds, though I can understand being wary of Heidi here with her deck Faden. <clears throat> Heidi True. Could, Heidi moving into an artifact-focused strategy here, picking up Emery, Lurker of the Lock, and Grim Monolith. Let's show Emery here. Emery, of course, a very powerful powerful tool for artifact decks. Anybody looking to to play and replay artifacts. Dowling Guide. Yeah, Kevin just settling into Classic. his lane and yeah. says, you folks, the seven of you, have a great draft. I'm going to be over here doing my own <laughs> yeah. thing. I mean, I... I don't think there's going to be a lot of interaction against him. I think him going hyper-aggressive is probably a smart move. I mean, no one else is really going to be going that round. He's going to be basically free to pick whatever he wants. I'm, I'm all in, and Red's always been the most consistent. Yeah. That's why I'm worried about some of these combo decks in a singleton format. It's not always going to be consistent. Yeah. While Red, good Red cards burn you in the face easy yeah if you if you build a deck full of cards and deal two three damage every time you cast them you know you're looking at a pretty consistent outcome i yeah. don't think you're going to win the draft with mono red but you're certainly not going to lose the draft with mono red you're looking at a a pretty like a pretty consistent four three five two type of finish i think um you know assuming you play your cards right mark picking up a very powerful card here taking it away from heidi and karn the great creator mm. i think that's a fantastic oh, yeah. pickup and folks we have a twin cast <laughs> here in round four from pete Look at that. Let's pull up Twin Cast. Now, this is interesting, um, uh, partially just because I think that there have been just better versions of this card printed right. in red. Narset's Reversal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in red, there's so many, but like even including Narset Reversal, that's probably just a strictly better card, right? Well, Narset's Reversal will bounce that spell back to your hand, so that's you won't true. get the initial effect unless you do recast it. That's but fair. Narset's Reversal, definitely a powerful card, something I do think is underrated in this format. But I, I do like the interaction with Narset's Reversal. It's also yeah. reactive on top of being proactive. So it can produce, you know, both ends of the spectrum. So I, I love doing something like Narset's Reversaling and Ancestral Recall, something oh, yeah. like that. Just oh, like, yeah. mm, I think I'm going to draw three cards this time around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Luke picking up Jace the Mind Sculptor, seeing the pressure on some of these control powerful planeswalkers here. Chad got his force of will. So. Yeah, ooh, Chad really moving in on this stuff. I'm sure Chad feels the hurt of losing the Jace, but with Narset and Teferi, he can't be all that mad. No, I mean, I think he's established most of his core pieces. Jace also, in a lot of formats, has been kind of just dipping. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many powerful control pieces coming out. I don't think he is really mad about, you know, losing sure. the Jace. I don't think it's going to be a big, big hit. It's a solid card in this format, in my in my experience. Okay. Um, being able to just brainstorm every turn when you're not playing a singleton format allows you to get just see a lot more of your cards. Yeah. No. Of course, without access to uh, reliable four of fetch lands, it is a little hard, bit harder yeah. to, to shuffle your cards away, but there are enough fetch lands in the format that it's possible. Patrick yeah. picks up the Reanimate to go with his Detutor and Dark Confidant. I'm scared some of his. Well, I guess I'm worried some of his payoffs might be taken now that he picked that early reanimate. But, yeah. you know, I don't know. We'll see. We will see because Redbeard picking up the Urza and the Winter Orb. <laughs> Solid <sweet>. combo here. <laughs> Just going to go ahead and tap my Winter Orb on your turn, at the end of your turn, for some mana. Oh, yeah. And then untap all of my, all of my lands, and you're not going to have a great time. So, Redbeard 
also looking to uh, fight for this artifact strategy. I wonder how much he and Heidi are going to siphon off of each other. And Mark, of course, with yeah, that Karn I mean, the Great Creator. three of them so far, right? Yeah, that's that's going to be an interesting little battle. And that, that battle tends to play out, I find, over the next ten picks or so. Uh, Patrick entomb. picking up the Entomb. Okay, so Patrick is probably going to heavy black, you know, reanimator style. Certainly. What do you so he if if might. you're playing reanimator? Mm -hmm. Where what are your what do you what are you looking for? What are your top reanimation picks in this format? Do you think? Um, I mean, Grizzlebrand's always a classic. I mm -hmm. think since you can see what everyone else is playing, you could probably grab an Iona and it probably work. You know, eighty percent plus of the time. Yes, and be just amazing. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sire of Insanity. Always have been. Always will be. That card, if left on check, and they don't have the interaction. They just lose the game. Absolutely, I, I strongly agree with you. I think those are those are some of my top reanimation picks as well. I think I think Gristlebrand number one, Iona number two. Um, I think most people would agree on that. And then the third spot it gets a little murkier. Oh, yeah. I do want to talk about this Prismatic Vista for Chad. That's one of my favorite fetch lands in this format because we oh, yeah. are going to be playing quite a lot of basic lands. Pull that up here. I think Vista might be might. It, it's it might be the best fetch land of the format. I know I know we like to fetch duels, but it's so strong. I mean, you're not going to get every duel. Yeah. So like, you always have basics. That card is fixing if you're three color better than a fetch land would be. It's so. yeah. It's just it's just fantastic. It's always going to get you what you need. Um, Ooh, looks like Pete and Patrick are going to fight for that reanimator. Ooh. Shell. That's going to be tough. There's really only room for one reanimator True. deck in a for, in a format like True. this. It's going to be very hard for for Patrick and Pete, and uh, I do not envy either of them Man. in this situation as they fight over these cards. I don't like reanimate as a singleton format. Like it's so fragile and such a glass cannon. It's always have been, even in a four of format. It's always been a glass cannon. I'm worried in the singleton format it's not going to be to where they want it to be. There is also just so much good graveyard hate oh, in yeah. Magic. Oh, yeah. In the Vintage Absolutely. Card Pool, the, the number of good graveyard hate cards is off the charts. Oh, yeah. I have I've played a few VRDs against Reanimator. I've never had trouble with the Reanimator part of it. Mm. I did play against a Reanimator style deck uh, in the online VRD, whose backup plan was to use cards like Thran Dynamo and, uh, shockingly to me, Lake of the Dead to just yeah. hard cast their threats, and that actually did quite well. They went five and two with that one um, in that VRD. Just I'm like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sack a <laughs> swamp yeah. to my Lake of the Dead, and here's Gristlebrand. Good uh, luck. I like, do like that. Like, oh, okay. So there's definite backup plans, but you just you have to you have to build with that in mind. Hear me out. Yes. What if Pete goes World Gorger combo? Ooh. We could he be has seeing... the anime dead. He has the Wheel of Fortune. He's already kind of in red. He could just go the World Gorger combo, and that would be so sweet. Oh, I really hope we see World Gorger combo here. Yeah. That would be fantastic. I've only ever seen uh, World Gorger play itself out, I think, one time in VRD, mm -hmm. and I believe it did draw the game. <laughs> Because the person who played it did not have a way to break the loop, Aww, dang. Uh, but they did draw. You know, they drew a game which I believe they were going to lose. So yeah, hey, not yeah. so bad, right? Thoughtsies. Okay, so Ooh. Mark has officially committed to a color. Mark picking up the Thoughtsies, floating down to fifth round here. Uh, in recent drafts, I've been seeing cards like Thoughtsies go in the second or third round. So nice to see Mark. Uh, with with some uh, with his experience in the format, at least at least watching a lot of drafts, picking it up here in the fifth round, um, I think it went later a lot of the time. Yeah, I think on average, I'm seeing on the sheet, fifth round is usually when it gets picked up. Yeah, on average, and that's over I think 57 different drafts. Yeah, if you take a look at some of the more recent uh, Discord and St. Lotus drafts, I think you'll see it go a little earlier. Whoa, Kevin with the Inquisition. I wonder if that was a hate pick. Mm. Or he could be going black red. I Bump think in the night, you got a lot of sweet options in the black red. I had a a Croxa related list brewed up for last mm, time in yeah. case I ended up in the Mox Ruby seat. Yeah. I still think that's a very powerful call. Call. I think I think Kevin may have also recognized the power of a, a black red aggressive disruptive strategy, or at least he's looking to try it out 
and I think Inquisition is a solid pickup. I doubt he'd be hate picking this early. It's just I think hate picking in this format is like you're just scuttling your own ship, really. I agree. There's so many options that like it just seems so hard to grab something significant from another person. And and at the, like to spend a pick that's so valuable, mm -hmm. uh, a fifth pick is just like it's it's worth so much. And just to take a card you're not going to play, mm, no thanks. Heidi picking up a couple of my favorite cards in this format, True Name, Nemesis, and Urza Saga. Interesting. She's on, like, a Xerox artifact style. That's yeah. interesting. I'm, I want to see how it shapes up in the later rounds. I'm interested what, to see what she yeah. picks up to go with that saga. Kevin picking up Terminate. Again, yeah. staying a little bit his, his own lane. Now, if I were Kevin here, I think I might be spending some of these other picks instead of on cards like Lightning Bolt and Goblin Guide. I honestly might lay my claim to cards like Red Elemental Blast and Pyroblast in the very early game. Yeah. Because you do see, you know, four or five blue drafters in oh, a yeah. lot of these VRDs. Uh, even six blue drafters some of the time. And just, <laughs> just having one mana counter spell can be very powerful. So we'll see what happens with Kevin's yeah, red blacklist. I don't form. think these are high on the totem pool, too. Yeah. So, like, in a normal draft, I would sometimes pass multicolor cards that are in my color. Yes. Because I assume they're going to wheel. Right. Like more often than not. I very much mm -hmm. doubt that anybody's going to be looking for Terminate in the next 10 rounds of this yeah. draft other than Kevin. I think he could have floated it a little later. But there's this format is so hard, you know, and it's very easy for us here in the, the commentary yeah. booth to uh, to talk about this when we're not up there drafting, right? Mark picking Ooh, up Mind Twist, one of my favorite twist. cards. Oh, baby. I'm excited. Common Opponent. Hey, Common Opponent. How's it going? In the... In the uh, <laughs> He picked up, like, a lot of, you know, zero-drop fast artifact ramps, so, like, yeah. Mind Twist. Mind Twist, a fantastic card insane. with those. Yeah. Common opponent pointing out, really wanted Heidi to grab Snapcaster Mage there, absolutely. Snapcaster Mage, one of the high picks in a lot of VRDs, and something that goes great with Ancestral Recall. And Pete is on Croxa. Pete picking Whoa. up the Croxa. I love it. And now I can hear him screaming upstairs. Oh, <laughs> no, my Croxa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin Kevin was in on Croxa and now he is disappointed. Poor guy. Luke picking Life's up that so light steel to go with Tinker. I mean, he has a Tinker, yeah. Absolutely. Jukem says, I like dark, grabbing Dark Rit before Mind Twist. Interesting. I. I I wonder. I wonder who's. I, I think Mind Twist is at least in Mark's mind likely to be the more contested card. Yeah. But it's hard to know. I mean, again, we have a lot of new drafters trying out a lot of new strategies. So um, a lot of a lot of our conventions are going to get thrown out the window today as people new to the format try out some new stuff and and do some cool learning, which is one of my favorite parts about this format. Patrick picking up the bizarre following Chad's Misty Rainforest. So Patrick definitely looking to leverage the power of either reanimation or potentially some dredge cards yeah. here. I was glad he was able to spell bizarre bad guy. I was, <laughs> I was worried there for a second. Like it's not the easiest one. It is a it is a hard one to spell sometimes. Interesting. Okay, so Chad's starting his land run now. Mm -hmm. He just wants to get his consistency, get his fixing, get what he needs. And often I see in these in these VRDs when somebody starts picking fetch lands, everybody mm -hmm. at the table will go, "Oh, fetch lands!" It's, it's that time. Same yeah. as you know, fantasy football. You know, the quarterback run. Yeah. You know, let's get them now. They're they're few and far between. Got to start grabbing them. Yeah, I see it happen with QBs. I see it happen with tight ends in a yeah. You know, in a in like a two TE format, something like that. Mm. People are like, "Oh, geez, I actually need to have two of these idiots." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Luckily, I am not playing a double tight end format. Oh, well, over over here in the world of best ball, uh, <laughs> things are a little different, let's yeah. say. Um, at least that's the Dy Dynasty best ball is a wild, wild world. Um, let's see, a uh, time twister? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, the nascence of the format, uh, absolutely Breacher. part of the appeal. Oh, he's grabbed two card combo. I mean, time time twister hole breacher seems pretty good yep just looking to uh take advantage of that combination that we mentioned earlier with narset just just i'm gonna draw a bunch of cards i'm gonna get a bunch of treasures have fun with your one card friend uh, patrick got his grizzle brand the payoff yep he needed for his reanimate spells now patrick sees the pressure being put on the reanimation potentially by pete and says no thank you i'm gonna snap up these powerful uh -huh. cards just while i can Takes the bazaar, takes Gristlebrand, and says, "Your move, Pete. Good luck." And we'll see how he reacts to that. 
so Chad, Chad, uh, getting getting to uh, getting to start the the run on lands and and still being the only person to really seem to care about it. <laughs> He's doing his own little land shopping here while everybody does their own thing. That's a surprise. I mean, with a misty rainforest, he could probably go into green, get yeah. an Oko in there. I haven't seen an Oko yet, which is you know. Yes, definitely. Uh, Oko falling pretty far from its normal spot in the second mm -hmm. or third round here. I think it's normally round six is when we tend to see an Well, there it is. There's Oko Thief of Crowns for Chad. I've seen that go round two, round three, my last couple of VRDs. Very yes. happy to see I Chad think, picking it up. I think seven was in it, two or three. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, uh, very, very good to get, good to see Oko. Oko, one of them, just an incredibly powerful card. I'm just going to keep uh, typing Chad's cards into the <laughs> into Scryfall. And there's Oko, Thief of Crowns, of course, the scourge of many tournament formats over the course of time. Uh, you know, ru ruiner of, of Grand Prix and Pro Tours alike, or Mythic Championships, I suppose. I found a foil in my car once. It was very exciting. <laughs> I was digging it out. It was in my glove compartment. Very excited. Nice. <laughs> but Volteki for Luke, he's, he's getting the combo. I mean, yep. looks like he's going to be doing some control combo finisher type style, which I would like a lot, personally, especially in this format. You gotta kill him somehow. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you need a way to win the game, and if your way is to take infinite turns and then play your Blightsteel Colossus and, and just attack you for a lot of infect. Yeah, Jason great. the Death, like, I mean, so many options. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of possibilities. One thing about the Voltaic key pick here is that there are quite a few keys. There's actually a better key than Man Voltaic key. Manifold key, key yeah. Mm -hmm manifold key and there's a couple of other options for untapping your your time vault of course there's mm. tesseret the seeker uh there's voltaic servant there's a few other uh a few other niche options that can be used to untap that time vault um so i'm in favor of actually floating the key quite a lot later yeah. i usually i think about picking my key up you know around That's, pick 18 pick 20 until you see one go at least right if know. somebody else grabs one of my keys even if heidi were to, to wheel two keys I, I i feel like i'd still be fine yeah i don't know i mean I'm sad that Heidi took that Urza Saga because I'm sure Luke would have loved an oh, Urza Saga. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. If you're the if you're the time vault player these days, yeah. you're really excited about that Urza saga. I am so hyped for Mark. He is having a good time. Yeah. I love his deck. Zero mana, rocks, fast mana, let's go. Mark has put a lot of time into studying this format, figuring mm -hmm. things out. Of course he is the the, the kind and generous host of our of our the the STL VRD the the St. Lotus drafts yeah. that we do uh, most of the time on this channel so he's seen a lot of these go down Kevin picks up Badlands along with Pete Scalding Tarn and Heidi picking up Mindslaver this is awesome do you think put, we'll put that Mindslaver oh yeah put that yeah. put that on the board and uh Heidi looking for Ral Zarek here as well a, a planeswalker with uh with a, a, a tap and untap ability. <laughs> um, I I don't know what he's doing. I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks awesome. It looks fun. I don't know what it's gonna be. So um. it looks. I'm um, yeah. It looks like some kind of is it value strategy. Not yeah. totally sure what it will end up looking like. But if Heidi can, can mind slaver lock somebody today, Ooh, I think awesome. she's gonna have a yeah. great day. Yeah. Kevin picking up Grave Titan sees the pressure on that from some of the reanimator players here. Mark, meanwhile, grabbing him to Turok to go with Mind Twist and Thoughtseize. Wow. People are going to have some bad times against Mark. <laughs> I mean, I can already see the turn one Mind Twist for five, Mind Twist for six, and yes. it just ends the game. Yeah. I think it's very interesting to see how Mark is reprioritizing some of these powerful discard spells in light of Kevin's move into black. Well, looks like Pete's kind of going in his own land run as well, yep. picking it up before it dries up. Scalding Tarn, Verdant Catacombs. We might be, we might see Pete setting up for some sort of mid-range Boomer Jun strategy mm -hmm. here. And Mana Drain for Luke. There we go. That's another one of the yeah. premium counter spells in this format. Yeah, wow. I was waiting for Chad to take it, but Luke just was there first. Yeah, I mean, there's always counter spell. You know, worst case scenario, mild you know, difference. Yeah, it's it's you know, Mana Drain's amazing, obviously, mm -hmm. but. You know, Counterspell is a fantastic card in yeah. this format. Nothing wrong with it. Um, Snapcaster Mage is still out there, uh, which which is a surprise to me. That's usually gone by now, but I'm sure Heidi is hoping to pick that up soon. Oh, I'm sure with that Ancestral Recall, just chilling. I uh, I think when I first picked Ancestral in my last draft, I, I may have taken uh, Snapcaster second or third. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's nothing better. There's no better feeling. We have folks. We have uh, 
St. Lotus VRD uh, number seven champion, Brandon Curry, in the chat here. How's it going, Brandon? I believe that's Brandon. And he says, um, hey, Brandon, I don't think they're listening to Carly Rae Jepsen upstairs. I'm sorry. I, if, if, if I could control the music, they would be, but I'm not in charge. Uh, Patrick with the, <laughs> Patrick with the exhume here. Brandon, Brandon, of course, the, uh, the, the, one of, one of the people I'm, I'm always happiest to lose a match of magic to such a, such a wonderful person. Obviously I would have rather, I would have rather beat him, but <laughs> I had a great time losing that finals to Brandon. Redbeard pricking up the chrome box. Yes. Look at this. What's he going to do with that? I guess with the Urza, it's pretty free. And we have Stephen Hagen here, another another classic member of the the St. Louis crew, and Kyle Kyle Richter, our 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 stalwart, our stalwart friend, always there to help us get things organized, and uh, hopefully play soon. Will there still be Pointer Saurus? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they deliver out here. <laughs> it's a little far from them. You know, I had to drive half an hour here, and I can I can walk to to pointers if you know if I'm determined in about forty minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I doubt they deliver out just to, to where we're at. Bass bond, Ooh, interesting. Oh yes, interesting. Hopefully, you can get the crucible to back up his you know potential combo he's trying to build into. Yeah, he's got fast bond. He's got strip mine. If he picks up crucible or Ramanap excavator. Yeah. Um, sure. Which has been Cruise do, yeah. uh, pretty solid. Can you and Sam come say hi around noon? I mean, I'm not in charge, but it sounds fine to me. <laughs> Oops, Snapcaster made from Chad. Oh, Chad picking up the Snapcaster. I love to see it. So Chad's going to be looking for some uh, some more instants and sorceries to flash back here. Right now, operating on kind of a dearth of those, only the Ponder and the Force of Will. So that's not the force of will. Not so good with Snapcaster Mage, I find. I think there's a lot of options, you know, in the later picks that he'd be able to do. They're not going to be as insane as, you know, Ancestral Recall, but I think he'll still have some good options and good payoffs for the Snapcaster Mage. Absolutely, Luke channel. picking up channel. Oh my. Wow, Ooh. that's very exciting. Ooh. So Luke looking to actually cast that Blightsteel Colossus. We may see Luke pick up some larger artifact monstrosities or perhaps some of the Eldrazi Titans coming up soon here in the draft. I wonder if we're doing breaks. Are we doing, are we doing breaks today? I don't know. No, they never told me. Not me. <laughs> I'm here until they tell me I'm not here. So. Yeah, exactly. I forgot to ask. I was like, oh, I don't know. What are we doing? <laughs> I just showed up, you know. Yeah. Just showed up to talk into it to a microphone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where I am. What's Pete gonna do? Oh. Yeah. Patrick took so many reanimator pieces. I don't know, Pete. You know, like Pete picking up rot Reggie, rotting Reggie. That's awesome. What a spicy pick. Everyone's favorite zombie dinosaur. Three mana, seven six forces you to discard a card. Uh, we may see Pete start to lean on some of the symmetrical discard effects yeah. like Liliana of the Veil and uh, and start pushing, trying to push hands, hands, hand size down to zero, Mark with the Talarian Academy pickup. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he has Emerald. the cards for it, yeah. Pearl, Crypt, Diamond. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can't. I So I saw some of Mark's draft prep, and I'm not going to say too much right now. Sure. But I don't remember this deck. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see this. Mark's going off scale. Okay, this is this is off script. I thought we were expecting something here. Kevin picking up the Blood Crypt, looking to just solidify his mana base here. I think it's too early. I think there's other, but also he's in some kind of weird strategy. I don't know what he could pick over it. Yeah, I don't think he's very tight on choices i think he's going to be pretty open this entire draft yeah he might i mean if i were him i might look to pick up something like duress i might look to pick up some of the the, the red elemental yeah. blast style cards here he that's probably, right you mentioned that yeah. earlier yeah picking up the anti-blue cards trash for treasure trash for treasure and ensnaring bridge let's go ahead and put trash for treasure up on the board one of my favorite uh, one-shot welder effects. Yeah, two wow. and a red, sack an artifact as well as a cost to return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, definitely. This is a testament to Mark's ability to adapt here. And Kevin picking up a card that I'm actually really excited about here. Unholy, Unholy Heat. Heat. Yeah, that card's great. I mean, 
I've played it in modern numerous occasions. The card just puts in work. Yeah. It's, and, a, it's a fantastic card. It's going to snipe a lot of powerful Planeswalkers. Yeah. Six damage off of uh, off of Delirium is, is not to be sneezed at. <laughs> I, I just hope he's going to be able to get his Delirium. You know, the consistency of trying to get four, you know, could be daunting at some points. Kevin's going to need a fetch land. Sure. Kevin's going to probably a couple of fetch lands here. He's going to get an artifact in his graveyard somehow to, like, yeah. really add up the consistency. Yeah, Kevin Kevin may need to look for cards like Pyrate, Spellbomb, or Shrine of Burning Rage to shore up that unholy heat here. Mark picking up Dark Ritual. Although Shrine of Burning Rage actually going into red black might might not be what he's looking for. Probably Pyrite Spell Bomb. Yeah. Or or true. just, you know, Tormod's Crypt. Uh, I mean, something Mishra like that. Ball is not terrible. Zero mana replace itself. Like yeah. it doesn't seem bad. Mishra and Urza both Diabolic with their baubles, both playable here. Diabolic Edict for Pete looking to combat some of uh Patrick's one creature nonsense. And Luke picks up the counter spell. There we go. Brandon, we have a the, we have a lot of folks. Uh, oh no, yeah, I, I understand. Some of these picks are, are not what I would be looking for, but again, we have a lot of people doing their first VRD ever, sort of new to this format now. Diabolic Edict here, interesting. Um, I'm thinking of a different card. There is a there is the split sec. I think it's just sudden sudden. Is it just sudden edict? It could be sudden edict. I was thinking. I was like, is there a strictly better version of Diabolic Edict? I there it is. Different. There it is. Yeah, split second. Yeah. Uh, yes, Brand Brandon uh, Tinker went in round two to Luke here, so don't worry, that's still here. Luke, meanwhile, picks up a counter spell, Shad with the spell pierce. Yeah, Sun Edict, um, definitely better than Diabolic Edict yeah, for sure. That's what I was thinking, but so that's just a uh, that's just a, a card knowledge error that happens. Interesting. Now to see Patrick go in Tomb, Bizarre, Gristlebrand, Exhum, Necromancy, Bitter Blossom. What does that mean? Is Bitter Blossom just here as a force field, or is something more nefarious? Being I don't planned? know. I mean, he has a lot more rounds to go. He could be a Yogg's Will. Okay. Okay. I don't see the storm there, but I maybe he could just be try and value a Yogg's Will. I'm not sure. That's interesting. Yeah, could just be. Could just be. Hey, you, uh, you, you beat my Gristle Brand. I guess I'll entomb and reanimate something else. Uh, I don't know. Because uh, um, yeah. at that point, your graveyard's probably gone. Not sure what the plan is. Redbeard, I like. I like this this move. Picking up the fetch land and the dual oh, yeah. land all at the same time. Absolutely. Liliana's defeat. That's the. I think that's the one. Which one? Um, the the other the other edict. Uh, Liliana's triumph. Liliana's triumph. That's thank you. Because yeah, yeah Liliana's defeat is the the other. It's some other thing. Yeah. No. Our devastation blow up plane. Yeah, yeah, if it's black, yeah, something happens. Yeah, like it's that, bad. Yeah. <laughs> that card's bad. <laughs> something not very good. The only defeat I've ever played in VRD is Jace's defeat because it's just a gain state with upside. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of blue spells, Chad on Brainstorm, Luke on Sensei's top. Both of these folks looking to get some velocity, work through their deck a little bit, try to find the cards that they need. Sensei's top being separated from Urza's Saga. Very sad for both of them. They'll recover. They'll, they'll be fine. I mean, it <laughs> seems like, I don't know. I like Chad's because I've always been a hard control fan. I like Luke's because that's combo finishers. It doesn't look like Chad has a lot of win the game cards. I mean... Sure, you can beat him to death with a Snapcast Mage. You can beat him to death with Oko Foods, but like, right? You know, I don't see, you know, a lot of finishers there. You can only control him so much. Pete taking the first card ever printed, the first Crimson Vow card. Of course, it's a reprint. It's yeah. a braid, um, a card that I do find is underappreciated in this format. Bolt a creature or blow up an artifact. artifact yeah, artifacts I think will matter in this format a lot. A hundred percent. Mark Lotus grabbing pedal. more fast oh, man with that Lotus Petal. We may see. <laughs> Mark's getting me hyped. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know what Mark's end game is here with the academy and all of this discard. Um, I'm interested to see how he plans to close out games, but he looks like he's going to exert a lot of control. And Kevin, now that is going to form Hellkite. Mana Storm Hellkite or Ma Mana Form, yeah, Mana Form Hellkite. Now that's one of the new. That is one of the new cards from Crimson Vow. Yeah. That's the four 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 wow. flying. When you cast a non creature spell, you get an X X Red Dragon Illusion with flying and haste. Or X is the mana value or the amount of mana spent to cast that spell, not just the mana value. I'm, I'm excited for Kevin's deck. He's picking a lot of nice, really sweet, spicy stuff. Yes, he's playing very fair. I'm. So I don't know if he's going to get preyed upon by the unfair decks. I, Mark, I think, is just going to take advantage of him. Luke, I think, is going to take advantage of that type oh, yeah. of fair strategy. I mean, so many, actually, drafters in this format are doing unfair strategies. Yes. Like, and I'm worried about his fair deck 
being able to hold up and keep you know keep up with it i think what what these red decks need a lot of the time is a more disruptive element i'm glad that he's adding that with the black uh Immers mm, Immersturm predator that's Okay, what is that? The 4-mana 3-3 flyer, when it becomes tapped, exile up to one target card from a graveyard and put a plus one, plus one counter. Wow, I, I don't see it. I don't... Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm interested. It, it sounds fun. I I don't see it. I don't think I don't think this is going to be quite good enough. Is that Mason in the chat? What's up, Mason? Mox Opal for Mark. Mark staying very disciplined here. Look at this. Just it's, more artifact mana to go with that thought. It's, or that it's open. No one's doing it. Everyone's yeah. trying to commit to their you know strategy and leaving all those generically good fast mana cards open. Yeah, Mark just Mark just uh, just a value drafter here, just taking the, the best cards available in his general strategy. Pete picking up Questing Beast, lending further credibility to my Boomer Jun theory. We've just got some mid range creatures, right? Third third round mana crypt. Yeah, we've got a. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, <laughs> we've got a lot of new drafters players, here, yeah. Yeah. a lot of folks new to the format. So uh, so please keep that in mind as you take a look over the spreadsheet. There's going to be a lot of learning here. Uh, a lot of people not quite not quite as in tune with you know the the 57 drafts on file that we have. Questing Beast, of course, uh, it's got three heads, and you're going to need all three to read all the text in that box. <laughs> Iron Claw Orc, what's up? Uh, hope you're having fun at uh, MTG Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see one of the Channel Fireball folks, tell them Raging Levine says hey, and I miss them. Veil <laughs> 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 uh, of Summer, Luke's trying to protect himself against Chad. Yeah, Ma Vail mainly Chad. I mean, I can only. But. Grabbing it early seems not terrible. Yeah, Veil of Summer very powerful in the blue heavy, the the normal blue heavy meta game with a lot of counter spells flying around. We'll see what this looks like today. Yeah. This is going to be a little bit different. Flooded Strand for Chad and Path to Exile for Patrick. He says, "Hey, well, you know what? I I'm going to have the be biggest creature on the battlefield come hell or high water." <laughs> that's fair, but what about Swords of Plowshare? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's such an interesting choice, especially with how many basics are in this format. I just don't think half. Yeah, perhaps wanting to, uh, perhaps wanting to to not give up the the life total advantage, trying to close things out quickly with a card like Gristlebrand, just play path and win that turn. Maybe I, I don't think maybe. I mean, I can see that, but with the beaters he's trying to produce, I don't think life's going to matter for the opponent. I, I agree. I gonna... also I also think moving. In, I, I I'm also just surprised about adding white to a deck like this. I usually see red. Go with uh, go with these black reanimation cards most of the time, and I think um, I think that's usually the way to go. <laughs> Mason getting dunked on in chat, love to see it. Um, Mason's a good guy, I love Mason, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to see what what Patrick thinks White's going to add to this particular deck list, and I think we'll see what Red Redbeard. I think I think we're going to get some more more lands here maybe a crucible is it yeah. crucible time i feel like I, it's his time i think it's now or never he goes for the crucible i don't think it's gonna last super late um but i don't know i mean it seems like heidi's also going for like a artifacty bluey yeah. staxy type deck I, I think you know her and redbeard have been talking and they have both agreed they want to stack people. They want to prevent them from playing the game. Well, the 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 best thing you can do with a format like this is talk to other people. You know, think about the format in advance. Yeah. Try to learn. And then the worst thing you can do is both go in deciding to play the same sure. deck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm in. You'll just absolutely take each other. <laughs> now, when I talk to Kevin at F and M's, he just wants the red. He wants to do red things. That's yeah. what he wants. And. I'm in. That sounds awesome. I know Kevin went with uh, more of an affinity focused strategy last time. He had he definitely had an affinity deck with some some high some very high power potential, very high ceiling. Unfortunately, that deck uh, had some had some lower floors as well. But I was very interested to see what he what he would do today. I think he's a very exciting. He's a very very good player. Very very exciting piece of this this format growth here in St. Louis and I'm excited to uh, the St. Louis area rather I'm excited mm. to see what he does today 
I don't agree with all of his picks today, but I don't think I've ever agreed with all of anyone's picks in any <laughs> yeah, of these no, me, me too, absolutely. Especially not my own. <laughs> so... No, I say, if in the future I ever do one of these... It's going to be a while. It's going to be yeah. a party, okay? We're going to have a great time. <laughs> I'm very excited to see what you get up to in one of these. I hope you do get the chance, because this is this is the most fun I, sounds I ever awesome. have playing yeah. Magic. I've yeah. played a lot of Magic in a lot of places, a lot of formats with a lot of people. VRD mm -hmm. is the absolute best format, in my opinion, um, because I think Limited is the best way to play Magic, and I think this is the expression of format knowledge and creativity Absolutely. Uh, in Limited that, that really gives me the most joy. Yeah, I was already thinking of doing some of these with my friends. It just looks like a good time. It's, it looks... it's so much fun. And you can even do, you know, we, we draft. Uh, Steven just linked the the Saint, the, the, the Discord. VRD Discord. Um, we actually do asynchronous online VRDs in there. Um, cool. So if you're looking to get into a VRD, but, you know, you don't have seven friends who are willing to commit a full yeah. day of their lives with you to something like this, uh, hop in hop in here. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> my, oh, my draft last STL VRD, I was very happy with that. That one was good. It was my, my, my last Discord draft that I was not happy with. But, <laughs> but making the finals, losing to Brandon's Planeswalker deck, I was very happy with that finish. But yeah, check out the Discord. There's a lot of cool conversation. Uh, the online drafts are a lot of fun great place for new people to hop in and learn if you don't have a crew to play with in real life i strongly recommend it we've we've gotten some folks from the discord down to st louis for uh for some of the the uh the vrds here yeah no i i, I that eldrazi deck was ripped from the pages of y'all's chicago <laughs> uh drafts absolutely i i plagiarized the f out of that one so thank you for innovating so that i don't have to <laughs> Redbeard picking up the Volcanic Island. Let's see what he has to go with it. I want the Crucible. I want to see it, I think. Yep. Now, I don't think anyone else will take it necessarily. I would be worried about Heidi. I don't know what she's doing. Even um, if Heidi takes the Crucible, she's not taking Ramanap Excavator, right? So, like, sure. he's probably fine. Well, so I know a couple who absolutely hate each other when they play Magic, <laughs> and I could see... Um, the wife and that absolutely hate drag. Everything they can. Yeah. I don't know if you know the racks or anything like that, but oh man, Tina would destroy Jason in this situation. Redbeard picking up. Ooh, time spiral deal with that hall breacher. Amen. Very interested to see how that plays out with the Urza, of course, and and lots of lots of artifact mana, lots of lots of sweet card draw. We'll see we'll see what he can do with Time Spiral here. It should be mentioned that Mister Curry was very happy with uh, the finish. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet he was. <laughs> Crucible definitely. Uh, Crucible definitely a. Uh, a, a different card than than Ramanap yeah. Excavator. I, I do think that being able to green Sun Zenith out your Excavator, sure. hoard it out, etc., etc., various ways to to replay it. Um, yeah, no, or to to get it out of. That's a good point. I mean, Liliana of the Veil for Patrick. So we're going to see him using that that symmetrical discard mm -hmm. to put some of those large creatures in the graveyard and days for Chad. I can already see it happening. He's going to get somebody with that days. Oh, yeah. somebody's going to run right into it. There is, there is nothing. There's nothing that feels better than getting somebody with a, a, a actually. Do, do you have one more? Like, do you, do you just have one more for that? I mean, this is just the classic <laughs> commander staple that gets everyone every time. Oh, and, you know, it's a, it's a tale as old as time. The white counter spell, you know, the I've, one that just next levels people. <laughs> I've seen people get mana tithe in VRD. It's yeah. very funny. That's awesome. I'm it's glad, one of I'm my glad favorite it's been things. picked. Oh place. yeah, no, it's it's. I've watched it happen in St. Louis. <laughs> we've we've we, at 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 the, the the St. Louis drafts. We've definitely seen mana tithe. I think I drafted mana tithe last time. Maybe I don't remember. I at least thought about it. I don't think I played it very much at all. I don't think I sideboarded it. If I did draft it, yeah. I've seen people get got with it. It's very funny. It's so good. Luke taking a minute to figure things out and as we can see these decks developing a little bit we've got Redbeard on R Redbeard and Mark both on kind of these open strategies a lot of just powerful valuable cards saying yeah. okay 
we're going to do something with these, but these are good in aggregate. Patrick leaning toward reanimator, Pete leaning towards some sort of a, a green, black, red, Jund, Jund Boomer mid range, Chad in the, the hard control zone, Luke with this Time Vault deck picking up a <laughs> Leovold Emissary of Dressed. Ooh, I love it. I love that card so much. Oh, I have to click on Leovold because there's too many Leovold cards. There it is. Uh, so Leovold, of course, another card in the vein of the Nar set, in the vein of the Hull Breacher saying, one card per turn for everyone forever. Well, except for me. I do whatever I want. <laughs> and Leovold, of course, protecting itself. You know, if you, if you want to bolt that Leovold, you're going to have to give me a card if you want to do it. Just a fantastic, uh, fantastic card. If, of course, you can pay that, that, uh, that, difficult mana cost in the upper right there. Does Luke have any fixing? Uh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I mean, I would start picking it up quick. I mean, Pete's, Pete has grabbed some. Chad has been grabbing some. Redbeard, I mean... Yeah, Redbeard's starting to put pressure yeah, on those lands. It's getting scary. It's probably going to dry up soon. Oh, yeah. I'll be worried about that Leovold then. Yeah, once you start dipping... I mean, the second tier of lands is still, like... Fine, you know, sure. you start to dip shock down into lands, the, yeah. the shock lands, the fast lands, the pain lands. There's a, there's a quite a few. Uh, the pathways have actually acquitted yeah. themselves quite well, or surprisingly well, anyway, in the uh, in this format. Has any check lands tend to see any light light of day? Check lands will get played. I I I, I would expect uh, Chad to pick up, you know, glacial fortress or or hinterland harbor at some point. Yeah, uh, those are, are fairly reasonable. Mark just stealing the Bloodstain Wire right out from under Kevin here. Woo! <laughs> Kevin's in tears up there, I'm sure. <laughs> Mark just says, well, I'm sure I'm going to play some sort of blue-black land. Mark Mark could easily pick up an underground sea on the way back here to get with that Bloodstained sure, Wire. If, if he actually wants to play blue. Thunderbreak region! So, one of the viewers earlier mentioned Dragonstorm. And I'm kind of interested. Like, that yeah. interests me. He doesn't have the fast mana I want to get to right. the dragon storm. That worries me. Now, but he's playing a lot of dragons. That's perhaps, cool. perhaps Kevin does know that if he wants desperate ritual, pyretic ritual, rite of flame, seething song, song etc., yeah. he can float those until you know pick a thousand. True. Right? He True. could pick those tomorrow, well, and no I, one would have taken them. He could have floated these dragons to in the very last pick too. Also, you yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And this is, again, one of the things where you... Oh, Heidi grabbing the Mishra's Bobble and the Walking Ballista. Mm, mm. That's got to hurt. That is going to hurt for Mark here. I'm sure he would have been very excited to have that. Kevin continuing to just pick up more and more dragons, dragons with Varric's Bladewing. Doing a very, very, uh, <laughs> very convincing impression I, of uh, my Ur-Dragon list here. <laughs> I don't know. I th yeah, exactly. I think this could have been, you know, 30 plus. Oh, like yeah. Round 30 plus. I didn't think you needed to go all in on this. That's interesting. It's very important in a, in a format like this. You've got your cards that you're really excited to take. The cards that make up the heart of your deck. That's all fine. But if nobody else wants them, save them yeah, for pick exactly. 35. When other people are fighting over sideboard cards, good mm -hmm. news. You already took all of your utility stuff, your yeah. sideboard, your mana stuff in picks 1 through 20. And then you get all your sweet stuff that nobody else gives a crap about yeah. when everybody yeah. else is fighting. You need those generic engine cards early. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anyone would have gone Dragons. No. I think he had so much time. I think he kind of... Is just jumping the ship, which I'm worried Ooh. about. Hater servant. I see what Mark's oh, doing now. Man, okay. that's exciting. Mark I hope, I hope he can get the grindstone. I really hope, but I'm not sure. We'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, Mark is going to make that move into the sort of two card Monty list, and and uh, Painter servant. Uh, some of these some of these two card combo decks haven't performed necessarily as well in the past, um, but I think when backed up with this level of disruption, mm -hmm. if Mark can make sure that he's the only one able to actually, you know. Play, <laughs> play yeah. Magic the Gathering. Uh, he'll be able to pull off these two card combos easily. It is unfortunate that some of the better tutors are gone. Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor already gone, but Imperial Steel is, Seal is still out yep. there, for example. Yep. And there's a couple other options as I well. I mean, in the way his deck is working, a Fabricate would be really good. A Reshape would be really good. Mm -hmm. Like all the artifact tutors in blue. Yeah, Transmute he, Artifact, another he could popular get there. option. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and some of those some of those cards are going to have overlap with Luke's Time Vault deck, Heidi's deck, potentially Redbeard's deck. 
So Mark, if Mark does want to go the blue artifact tutor route, he's going to want to go ahead and nab those now rather than later. Yeah. On the other hand, if he does want to dip into white, he can grab cards like Enlightened Tutor and uh, try to move that way. That way. For anyone who doesn't know, Painter Servant. Ah, uh, yes. The, the the number one best scarecrow in Magic the Gathering here, Painter I, Servant. I love that card. I'm very excited <laughs> I got Unbanded Commander. Oh, yeah. Because then now I could just red a Mental Blast and Power Blast anything. It's <laughs> awesome. I have, I have a good time. <laughs> it is great. Uh, one lace, usually bad, but a, a an infinite lace for everything. Pretty good. Delta for Luke, Mystical Tutor for Chad, oh, and Underground Sea for Pete, locking that out for Mark. My, Mark may be seeing the Scrubland here, but Collective Brutality, a fantastic card for the Reanimator deck yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, disruption against the blue decks, removal against, you know, the low to the ground decks. I mean, I like it. It's yeah. versatile, it does a lot. It helps his strategy. I think it's a good pick. Escalate puts the puts the cards you want in the graveyard in the graveyard where they belong. Yeah. Very excited to see that. Um, you know, you don't mind discarding Bitter Blossom. You don't mind discarding something you want to Yogg's Will back later. Mm -hmm. Redbeard tendril, lining up his tendril. Storm picks. We got Tendrils in Underworld what? Breach. Ooh, baby. I didn't even know he go Storm. Like, that's surprising to me. I didn't think that's where his list was kind of going. Yeah, well, we've got we've got the two the two draw sevens, right? We've got Twister and Time Spiral. Yeah. Um, we've got the Fast Bond to power out some lands, potentially. Chrome, Chrome Mox is a, a reasonable Storm pick. Strip Mine does feel a little out of place, though. Yeah, we'll I see agree. if that gets I mean, he has the side. Fast Bond to go with it, but yeah, I don't know. Another tutor taken up by Patrick. Imperial Seal, uh, the 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 Portal Three Kingdoms Vampiric Tutor, Sorcery Speed, little little worse, but still quite playable. Do we think Redbeard took it from Mark? Because after he picked Tendril, mm. I could hear Ruckus up there. So I think maybe he he stole it from Mark. I think I, Mark could have played that card easily and it could have been amazing. It's possible. I think Mark lacks the access at this point to some of the powerful card draw. Sure. Some of the blue spells he would probably need. To get him in the storm. That's yeah. Fair. But, uh, I mean, whenever anybody picks tendrils, the, the table the table's going to explode, right? That's <laughs> yeah. just what's going to happen. True, true. In a singleton format, <laughs> I definitely underplay tendrils even though it's one of my favorite cards in the game. Oh, yeah. I love me some tendrils, but... I, I still have, you know, against against my better judgment, I still have a legacy a legacy tendrils deck together. Um, you know, doesn't do I anything. Mean, it sits in my house. I never I don't have anywhere to play legacy. True. Because who plays who actually plays paper legacy anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. Um so I should just take it apart. I mean, but I agree with you and also Epic Storm is probably just a better storm. I'm still on Ignazium Tendril. I'm still stuck there, I can't get out of it. Ant is where I've grown up. That's I, uh, where I'll just be forever. I mean, it's I used not to, the good. But. I used to play Ant. Yeah. I got I got out of the Ant game. I I I love Ant. I respect it, but I got out. I I, I understand. I made the I made the jump. I haven't looked back. <laughs> Epic's good. Don't it's get me wrong. Good. It's very good. Much more powerful. And you've seen some of Cook's list with the white and him going oh, five color yes. now. Yes, it looks nice. My list is my list is old. I would need to actually <laughs> update it yeah. before I went to a tournament. But there's no tournament, so it doesn't matter. Dig wow. through time for Chad. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited with the with the brainstorm with the the three fetch lands so far okay. with the ponder. Dig through time, a very powerful card with cards like that where you just want to hurl your your hurl stuff into your graveyard. We may see Chad pick up cards like Thought, Scour, Mental Note later in the draft to sure. augment that. And his Snapcast is only getting better. Mm -hmm. I see Spell Pierce, Brainstorm, as you mentioned. It's only getting better from here. Yeah. The Snapcaster is awesome. Looks like Luke's on the land run now, trying to pick up his stuff to play his Leovold on turn three. Yeah, picking up that Bayou here to go with the blue to Delta. Pete picking up okay. Taiga. Interesting that Underground Ooh. Sea starting to look like maybe a piece of hate pick. And Mark picking up the Scrubland. I like it. Mark's, uh, Mark Mark planning into, to move into sort of a, a white-black yeah, uh, two-card combo list. I wonder what his white cards are going to be. I wonder, what's, is he going to try and reanimate Iona? Because I don't see the reanimate spells, so... He ain't gonna be doing that. <laughs> no, we're not gonna see. We're not gonna see reanimate Iona. I'm gonna. Yeah. Well, you'll, we'll, uh... well, to be fair, with how much fast mana he has, he could just hard cast her. It's true. Uh, you know, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Now, here's here's what I would do okay. for Mark's seat here. Sure. I'm gonna start picking up Thalia. I'm gonna start picking up other like little tax effects, right? Sure. And just play black black hand disruption. Yeah. And then white onboard disruption 
to really just opportunistic dragon? I'm sorry, I was talking about death and taxes, but opportunistic dragon got picked. Oh yeah, no, we'll see. Re we'll see painter servant grindstone. We'll see a, a helm a helm leyline rest in peace combo. Um, and Ashiok Dream Render for Heidi, and we are going to take a quick break here. Um, we should. Uh, we usually now we so usually many. do an interview during the breaks. We usually interview somebody, one oh. of the players. Who do we want to talk to? So there's a couple of people I'm interested in, kind of see what they're thinking, what their mind process is. I like Kevin. Yeah. And I like Mark. Yes. I think those are the two decks that we don't really know. Maybe Heidi as well, because we just those three. I don't really know where they're going. Yeah. I don't know what's going on over here. All the other five, I generally know what they're trying to do. I'm still kind of iffy on Pete. I don't know what Pete's yeah. trying to do either. So like the second half of yeah. it, I think is and any one of those would be a good interview. I want to give Pete a little more time before we yeah. talk to Pete. I think Pete's Pete's setting something up. Don't know yeah. what it is, but I want to give Pete some time. But it looks like we've got Kevin down here. Kevin, how you guys doing? We're, we're doing pretty good. How are you, my friend? That's right. I can't we, complain. We, I, we want to talk to you anyway. We so. definitely <laughs> want to talk to you. Let me hide the. Uh, let me hide the chat here. Sure. Uh, I'm just gonna, just gonna minimize this actually. And uh, do you want to interview Kevin or should I interview Kevin? Uh, cool. I can get up. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a break. Kevin, come have a seat, my friend. I'll just, I'll just adjust this. I'll just make sure you're in frame. I'll move this over here. I'll change Darian to Kevin for now. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Um, hey, Kevin. Hello. How's it going, my dude? I I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I can see that. <laughs> see, the, the, the secret tech is still to come. Okay. There, there are plans for a heartless summoning later. Oh, <laughs> this is a heartless summoning deck. <laughs> okay, now I love this. I want you to know that I love this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet. I don't know if the door is open or what, but tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. It, it, it was one of the ideas I've been toying. I'm like, you know, I can also get a bunch of good dragons at four that right. have four power. Yeah. So heartless summoning makes them essentially. Three power, two mana flyers. Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds fine. And just have an army of them. Yeah. Now, what's the plan for Heartless Summoning? Because I see that we don't have we have no tutors, right? We we don't we don't have we don't have DT we don't have VT we don't have an Imp Seal. How are we getting it? Lucky. Okay. <laughs> the, the, there's also a reason I'm pretty much sticking at four drop dragons. Right. <laughs> yeah, we just we don't want to go too far above that. We want to be able to actually cast our spells. So that makes right. sense. That makes sense. Okay. But right now I'm just trying to pick as many different ways to generate value for my dragons as I can. Like the Emmerstorm Predator yep. is d essentially a main board answer against Patrick's Reanimator. Right. It's a direct <laughs> it's a direct response to that gristle brand. You you tap it, it it goes, it grabs the gristle brand and says, "Okay, that was a, thanks for playing." Right. <laughs> Like opportunistic dragon, who's not playing with artifacts? Right. <laughs> somebody's somebody's gonna have an artifact. They're gonna have something. You take it. Great. Fantastic. Exactly. Like especially if like Luke tinkers up blight steel and I take that. Right. I'll take I, that. I'm Thank giggling. You. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that you we saw that you started with with kind of the traditional red start. Right. We got the ruby. We got the ragavan. I think that that was pretty much the the start for the red player in in St. Louis St. Louis VRD seven. Right. Yeah. That was what Jago started with. Ruby into Ragavan, Lightning Bolt, Goblin Guide, um, and then you moved into some of the black cards, uh, and you picked up the the six pick Terminate. We were we were surprised by the Terminate. I will say, um, what is your was Terminate something you were like targeting? You were like, I want to be able to beat up on creatures. Yeah, it, it was something. that's like, I know I want to have it. I'm not really wor too worried about fighting for it, mm -hmm. so I, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna grab it now before sure. I forget. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Just want to make sure I cement this archetype in here. I'm going to get the cards I need. Nobody wants any of my cards, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when I pick them, basically. <laughs> and, like, when, when Pete took the Kroxa, that I was kind of okay with that because I was already planning on being in the Heartless Summoning. And right. Kroxa really doesn't 
do much in that deck yeah. other than just get smaller. Yeah, other than just be a 5-5 five, five instead of a 6-6. Six, six. It's like, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's but still he, Kruxa. When, when, he, when he took the Rotting Regisaur, though, that was what I wanted. Yeah, <laughs> that had to hurt. And, and, like, I was actually planning on taking it that same round. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate that. <laughs> You and I had a couple of those in the in in the last VRD. And yes, we, yes, we, we did. had a couple of, of like dagger staring across the table moments last time, if I recall correctly. Well, although I think the first one was when I took uh, the Esper Sentinel way sooner than you thought. Oh you... yeah! Oh, that bummed me out. Oh, that really. I remember that now. So now that we've talked a little bit about your deck. Let's let's talk about the the table a little bit. Um, of the other decks at the table, whose whose deck are you most afraid of? Uh, honestly, it's probably going to be uh, Patrick's Reanimator, but that's just because, like, I'm playing a relatively linear deck, right? Whereas Reanimator can just go boom, oops, I win. Right, so you're worried about this this unfair deck that just can can just has the potential to come out under you immediately, right? Right. Okay. But other than that, I think I'm actually setting up to be one of the faster decks, even though I'm playing a fair deck. Right. Well, as long as you got that Artless Summoning in your opening hand, and you know, I think you can afford to to take like a Mulligan each game, probably. Mm -hmm. That's something that uh, I think might work out well for you. I like the Grave Titan too. I think that's actually very sweet. I mean, uh, other stuff on my radar is also going to be. Inferno Titan, mm -hmm. uh, Mimic Vat. Yes. And then both of the Gear Hulks. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, making those two cheaper does does add a little bit of a kick to those. Mm -hmm. With such a powerful enters the battlefield effect, minus one, minus one, really not that big. Yeah, cool. Like Combustible, that means it's a four <laughs> mana, five, five with first strike. Yeah. Fine. And, <laughs> and Noxious is what? A f four mana. Of four, three, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That blows something up? Yeah. Fine. You, you gain a bunch of life. Great. <laughs> but yeah, like realistically, I think I'm going to be able to float the Heartless Summoning until way late. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 don't, I think you could take that 45th and probably be fine, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm just wondering if I'm going to be able to do what I did in the last one with uh, picks 45 and 46. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> now a lot more people know that that happened <laughs> mm, that remind us remind remind for the people who weren't there remind uh, us. for my picks 45 and 46 at the last one it was the first time we were trying out where if on any number card you get an infinite number of them mm -hmm. and i took thrumming stone and relentless rats yes <laughs> now we have moved that down to i believe 20 20 copies 25 25 copies so that mill can still be a thing and so that we don't have to deal with someone who's like i'd like 200 copies of shadowborn apostle yeah, and, please and like i actually was talking to mark about that last time i'm like yeah I'm, i know i'm the only one who took advantage of this new right. rule that we're trying out but I think you actually have to cap it somewhere. Yes. Or Mill is just completely hated out of the format right. by the rules. Which is too bad because there's definitely, there is a Mill deck in this format. There yeah. With cards like Tasha's Hideous Laughter and, and other very powerful Mill cards that have been printed recently, um, I think there's absolutely a Mill, card in, a Mill deck in this format. It's not here. It's not one of these eight <laughs> decks, right? But right. it exists. Although I, based on past streams that I've watched and all that, I think we're actually setting up to have one of the most varied VRDs as far as decks everyone's playing. Oh, absolutely. I think I think one of the things that really adds to that is the fact that this is a lot of people's first VRD. Yeah, we had six of our eight drafters, this is their first one. Right. And then only Mark and myself have done this before. Yeah, you and Mark are the only two the only two vets here. And you've done this is your second. second? Okay. I couldn't remember if it was your second or third at yeah, this, this point. This is my, only my second time doing it. And this is Mark's third, third I believe. Actually, as a player. Yes. Having hosted many, commentated, etc., but but only but Mark's I, third as I, a player, and I think it's his first in like what two, three years. He has not done one of these in some time. Yes, <laughs> I, and I think he's doing this one. I think he's getting ready to do. Uh, we're getting ready to do one in the Discord that I believe he's in as well. So uh, he's he's going to be back to back in a couple of VRDs. That's going to be a lot of fun, hopefully but, for him. I'm just wondering. How many people I'm going to catch by surprise when I do take the Heartless Summoning? I seven, <laughs> <laughs> seven plus seven plus everybody out here there who was surprised when you said it just a minute ago in the in the chat. I mean, the, the, like I just loved how your face lit up when I told you what my plan is. Look, <laughs> do I think you're going to win the whole thing with Heartless Summoning? I don't know. It's hard to say. There's eight people in this draft. Maybe, maybe not. It, I, is it possible? Is it, I think I'm setting myself it, up. 
Is it possible? Sure, it's possible. Absolutely, it's possible. Is it the sweetest thing I've heard in like a month and a half? Absolutely, it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm already thinking I'm going to do better than I did the last one, but that's not a very high bar because the last one I went one and six. Yeah. It but a lot, a lot of that was just drawing bad and a deck that w- would have been suited to more unfair decks in the yes. meta than there were at the last one. Yeah, we, we had a couple people. Ma- Mason and I were definitely pushing 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 things into fair deck territory mm-hmm. last time. Uh, he and I are both big believers in in fair decks and creatures and, and, and pieces of hate, hate cards. And... Although, I, I'm sure Mason's probably throwing a fit about how late Thought Seize and Inquisition went. <laughs> Uh, if if he's if if he's not well, we are we did we did that for him down here. I was like, where? What's happening? But I also you know got to remember again, six people, first time in the format. Well, like, there's right, a lot of learning to do. My plan, right before Mark actually took Thoughtseize, my plan was actually to take both of them. I figured when you took the Inquisition, I was like, he was going to wheel Thoughtseize Inquisition because Heidi was not going to take either of those cards, and now he's sad. And yep. well, now we have confirmation. Yep. But I I think. It, in the next round, I'm probably going to start picking up some of the sideboard cards I might be fighting over, but sure. I don't think there's going to be a too whole lot of them because I'm playing a very relatively specific deck that I don't think they see coming yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like they're saying, "Oh, dragons!" Like they they were they're afraid that I'm going to take Dragon Storm late. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't have any idea for a nine mana sorcery. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to cast. Yeah, they have to do some work. Have to yeah, do a lot of work. And uh, your only piece of fast mana right now is Mox Ruby. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> Seems unlikely. Now, I, I may try and grab um, the new Olivia later, too. Mm, <laughs> yes, that's the, 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 reanima- the, the six mana Olivia that, that it reanimates things tapped and attacking when it attacks. Yep. And they stick around as long as you have a legendary vampire. Mm-hmm. Very powerful card. Um, and then another card I plan on taking probably pretty late is actually Florian Voldaren mm. to help dig for what I need. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> That's going to get you a lot more velocity through your deck. Okay, help you find that card or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I've got a plan and I think my plan is very under everyone's radar right now. And as I th- I think the longer it stays that way, the better off I am. Well, if there's any time to make something like that work, it is today. It is on a day where people are just maximally unprepared for it. <laughs> well, the cat's out of the bag in the chat now, but uh, I'm very excited to see what you pick for the next, you know, 31, however many number of picks and, and, and how it goes. So mm-hmm. thanks, Kevin. It was yep. great. I've done a lot um, yeah. before he got to this point. All right, it looks like we are back, folks. We are once again here. Uh, let me tell them we're back. Go ahead. We had a little connection problem with Twitch, but things are fine now, and we're ready to resume the draft. Having done that little interview, Darian's back, and Heidi's picking up Mystic Sanctuary. Does mm. she have? What does she have to go with Mystic Sanctuary? I mean, it doesn't seem like she's going out much outside of blue. Yeah. So I think it'll just be a blue splash red situation where Sanctuary could be not terrible. Leyline Tyrant, okay. Yep, Leyline Tyrant, another yeah. another card in that same vein. Uh, Mark picking up the Marsh Flats, of course, to go with that Scrubland. Make sure he can access the white half of his deck, whatever that may look like. Again, my theory is that it will involve Thalia's. Should be an interesting uh, should be an interesting deck as he veers continues to veer toward that. Uh, that death and taxes two card combo list, yeah. which is a little more in line with some of the stuff he was preparing. And he was actually, uh, I talked to him just a minute ago. Oh, good. And he feels like he punted. He feels like he made a couple of mistakes there. He feels like he shouldn't have gone in the black with the thoughtsies. Mm-hmm. And he didn't realize ancestral was not picked early. He assumed, like all VRDs, yeah. pick one or two. Yes. And he just blink, didn't think about it. He's like, all right, mox, 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 let's go. And then he realized it was pick eight, and he's like, "That's insane." And <laughs> he he feels like he kind of messed up there, um, but he seems excited for his list. Yeah, he's gonna try and 
did a little sweet artifact stuff. He was saying he's probably for like nine lands, and I'm very excited <laughs> to see to see how that shapes up. Um, I love a nice low curve deck yeah. and mark with the emerald pearl crypt diamond. The diamond, mm, diamond, diamond's interesting with, with nine with lands. Nine lands yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Opal, opal helps. Petal helps. Ritual. He has 46 picks. Yeah. Diamond could be a cut. I mean, it's not you know guarantee. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, but. If he yeah. cuts diamond, he cuts diamond. He'll survive. Yeah, he feels weird about a lot of his picks, but I think it's going to be <coughs> a pretty strong deck. Um, I'm interested in Kevin's list. Um, oh, yeah. I think I, at the end of today, especially for, for the six folks for whom this is their first VRD, yeah. if you say, if you, at the end of the day you say to them, how do you feel your draft went? They're going to say, oh, I could have done so many things better. Sure, right? They're going to have so much learning, so many realizations, that I think that's so cool. I mean, even Mark, as a veteran player, yeah. says that as well. He's like, yeah. I failed in multiple aspects of this draft so far and right. I'm like interesting yeah and he mentioned something which I thought was interesting as well Blue's not he feels like Black is the highest pick rate right now which is yeah. true he's he's right that this definitely 8 man pod went way heavy into Black compared to what you would normally see in a VRD yeah we've got let's 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 take a look at the, the decks that are like actual blue decks not like decks just with blue cards but mm. like serious blue decks we got Redbeard right the Twister the uh, time spiral that looks like a blue deck. Yeah, got Chad. Chad in the control list. That's certainly a blue deck. Luke. That's probably a blue deck. We've got multiple double blue spells. Yeah, I think he's going to have a lot of blue interactions. So yeah, and Heidi. Heidi seems to be very dedicated. Probably going to gonna blue be a well. blue deck, but that's four. Not the f not like six like we normally see. Yeah, Patrick definitely going into white here with the silence. He's committing Ooh. to this, you know, Azorius. Now so many silences. I am I am I'm I'm sad to report that uh, Patrick should have okay Patrick Patrick did did what he needed to because <laughs> yeah, because sure. those cards are in reverse order right we sure. pick Orm's Chant sure. before we pick Silence I, sure. I played Orm's Chant in uh, in in blue white just to stop combo players uh, yeah. very recently but or the hyper aggressive decks from Murder yeah. you yeah absolutely or just to buy a turn against something like Twin right like yeah absolutely. here I go make all my stuff. Actually, Orms chant you, untap and deal with it somehow, or kill you. Yeah, and I was actually talking to Redbeard as well. He seems like he's moving in the storm now. He feels oh, yeah. like he made a mistake with the with the fast bond and the strip mine. Mm -hmm. Now I don't think he's going the crucible route. I don't think he's no. going the hard hate route. He wants the storm now. And yeah, I'm, and I'm interested to see how his list turns out because I'm not very high on storm. I'm not. Well, we'll see. He's picked up that Spell Seeker, which is a solid tutor for decks like yep. this. We've got the Brain Freeze. Mm -hmm. um, going back through, Chad picking up Miscalculation, a, a solid two-mana counter spell that does cycle, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Luke on the Watery Grave, since, uh, of course, uh, Underground Sea apparently hate-picked by Pete, who took the Overgrown Tomb here uh, to shore up his Boomer Jund mana base. Yeah, I mean... This is interesting, and I know you mentioned you hate hate picks. Yes. I kind of do, too, because <laughs> the pool is so vast. Yeah. I think hate picking is not the thing you want to be doing. You are. You, you're The thing about hate picking is that you have you have seven opponents, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're going to play against all of them. This is a round-robin format. Yeah. Uh, hurting one of your opponents by, by hate picking, you are reducing the quality of one person's deck as well as yours, which means that relatively... Uh, six of your opponents just went up in terms of win percentage against Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So actually, that's interesting. I didn't know that. It's only eight rounds, or it's seven rounds. Yeah. Everyone plays against everyone. Yep. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing going into this. Yeah, that's the that's the plan. Is that uh, is everybody plays everybody? So it's uh it's quite the day, right? Yeah. Uh, that's absolutely. why with the asynchronous ones we do it. You know, like it takes a couple weeks for everybody to get their games in, right? Because yeah. everybody's playing from different time zones at home. Chad picking up the Vandillion Click. Big fan of the Vandillion Click pickup here. Great disruptive card. Great, oh, yeah. great creature to beat down with. Create create a real clock here, along with the Oko. Great at creating a clock. One one important tip, if you're going to be doing a, a, a VRD or just something long like this, just drink water. Drink water all day. Oh, drink sure. As much Absolutely. water as you possibly can or you'll die. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have had I have had a tough week. I had a I had what I believe to be a four-day migraine, and I uh, just came out of it yesterday afternoon, and I still need to drink so much water. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's been fun. No, I walked upstairs during the break, looked at uh, Heidi, and I was like, yeah. Drink. <laughs> Talking. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. 
a ooh a cauldron complete. Cauldron complete. Interesting. Now that's it's interesting to yeah. see that before stone forge. I know. I mean, I feel like you just want to grab the stone forge. I feel like cauldron complete's a mark thing. Yeah. Right. Like he has the acceleration. He has the artifacts. Right. He could just get to a cauldron complete, and he's already in white to get to the stone forge. Absolutely. I think. I think if I'm mark here, oh, duress, mark picking yeah. up the duress, the the lost cauldron. third member of the the one mana discard triplets here. He has a, grabbed a breeding pool. I feel like he's four color ward gorger. Yeah. I know he's grabbing a bunch of boomer junk stuff, but I feel like there's going to be in there. I don't know. I I hope. I so. haven't talked to him. About I hope so. Him. Well, maybe. Pardon the noise. Oh yeah, go uh, for it. Just 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 <laughs> just <laughs> let the big dog hunt, um, as they say. Grip it and death, rip it. Yeah. Um, Eben, Eben Death Draco Lich, another interesting pickup for the uh, Heartless Summoning deck. Throw that up here. The Unkillable Dragon, essentially. Yes. From AFR here, yeah. as long as something died, you can just go ahead and drop that into play. Ah, interesting. Yes, Channel and Tinker, both options for putting Calder Complete into play. Thank you, mm, chat. Sure, yeah. Channel Calder is indeed hot. Strongly agree. How you picking up is it signal and defense grid looking to protect her her investment against some of the uh, <clears throat> some of the interactive spells that might be played on yeah. her turn by her opponents. Absolutely. Now I know we mentioned that Crimson Vow and all those newer set stuff probably wouldn't be seen a lot, but we forgot <laughs> Kevin was in this draft. <laughs> we forgot. I should have I should have considered um, this in my calculations of what newer cards we're going to see. And as soon as you said that, Olivia Crimson Bride coming down. Let's wow, let's wow. go ahead and put that up on the board. Olivia Crimson Bride. I splashed this in one of my pre-release sealed decks because, well. That's what you do in in the pre-release. You splash your bomb. Yeah, she's yeah, she is a bomb. Absolutely, I'm worried about her in standard, but I think in a limited setting, she's absolutely a bomb. Heidi does not have Tinker. Uh, Luke has Tinker in the the two spot here. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's got that that going. But Olivia Crimson Bride, yeah, very exciting, powerful card. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, I may have I may have hit that. Yeah. Yeah, Luke's got the cauldron with the tinker and the blade steel and the time vault and all that good stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so ancient tomb for Mark, another great card with that uh, tel uh, not Teleri Academy, the uh, mind twist here, and potentially potentially helpful to cast Karn, get the Karn mm -hmm. Mycos and Platus combo going. Another yeah. you definitely mentioned the ancient tomb to me, which I thought was interesting. Yes, um, somebody one of the commenters said Kevin might become the first drafter to get a dragon speaker shaman and. He has dragons for it. He yep. wants to do what you were talking about earlier. I think it works. I think yeah. that's a good option. That's Could go dragon speaker do. shaman. There's also the there's a two mana goblin that I think reduces the cost of your dragons by, by one. one from dragons of Tarkir. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember the name of that card. It's it's but the yeah dragon speaker shaman of course from Scourge one mm -hmm. red red make your dragons two cheaper. Yeah, I don't think that's ever been VRD. Yeah, Bajuka Bog. P picking up the Bajuka Bug. Stink Drinker Daredevil. Stink Drinker Daredevil. Isn't that the one that makes... Isn't Stink Drinker Devil the one that makes Giants cheaper from Lorwyn? Let's find out. Stink Drinker. Yeah, I think that's a giant one. That's the one with the tooth, right? It's holding the tooth. Yeah, yeah no, that's a there. giant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like Dragon Servant. Dragon Servant, yeah. That's that, the that one. That is absolutely it. From Dragons of Turkey, it's not uncommon. Yeah, I remember it now. Thank you. Oh, Stink Trinker Daredevil. I forgot the tooth was bloody, too. Ugh, I hate it. Let's look at something else. Let's what? Oh, here. Let me bring up... <laughs> put, put anything else on the board. Let's bring up the new pretty boy of Magic the Gathering. Oh. Look at it. <laughs> Dragon Lord Servant. That's what it is. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Soren the Mirthless. Fantastic. Plus one. Optional Bob. Minus two. Make a Vampire Light Hawk, I believe, as the people are calling no. it. No Death Touch. Flying Life Link. And then minus seven. Drain you for thirteen. I do want to bring up an interesting pick of Luke. I think he's just going deep into two card combos, just so, as many as he can jam into his deck with Thopter Foundry. That's going to be interesting because Mark seems to be doing a very similar thing here. Yeah. They're going to have to stay away from each other. Luke picking up the Thopter Foundry, of course, combining with Sword of the Meek to make quite the army of one ones yeah. and a two three. <laughs> Swords of Plasha for Chad, another beautiful control card that you know. Yep. You see it in Blue X control deck for the most part. Absolutely library fantastic pickup. Alexandria. Now, library is one of those uh, one of those cards that people 
tend to think is a lot better than it is in this format. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't play out quite as well as you'd expect. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's good in Patrick's deck. Yeah? Patrick seems more proactive, more yeah. aggressive. You want him to get Chad would have grabbed the library like mm -hmm. Xandria, you know? When you see it in old school, it's in the deck. Right. Like, exactly. Like, you don't... That's interesting. A library. I don't think it's going to work for him, honestly. No, I think that's a uh, that's a poor pick, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, what Redbeard is looking for is commit, commit to memory. space slash slash. There we go. You figured it out. Commit to memory. Four mana to uh, to take a card, a spell on the stack, and put it second from the top. A spell or non land permanent from its own library. With second a twister from the top. available on the bottom. Yeah, after mathing into the twister mode for six, and yet Sylvan Library remains undrafted. I know it hurts. I think the Lee of I think the the Lee of Old player will probably pick up Sylvan Library. Green, green's been short this entire time. There's not been a lot of green drafted. Yeah, um, it's only really Redbeard and Luke. I mean, there's no green anywhere else. And there's a lot of powerful green cards that just I think might not get drafted. Like we might not see Green Sun Zenith, for example, and that gives yeah. that hurts me physically. <laughs> and I know Mason. I think it was six, right? Did yeah. well with elves. Mason Mason won with that that elf list with yeah. cards like dudes GSC cards like Elvish Clan Caller. In Reanimator, you can use Library to overdraw your opener on seven and discard to hand size. Ah, so good in the opener. But it's a singleton format. I don't right. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's hard, right? Like that's yeah. the thing is, like it's a singleton format, but you can say that about pretty much any card, right? That's, that's fair. A, yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. A, You're right. That's the 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 creature dies to removal of uh, of of singleton formats, like. Sure, it, it's bad when it's bad, but it's good when it's good. And sure. we'll see. Like we'll Lotus. See I mean, Lotus right. is the same exact thing. So, no, exactly. that's a fair it's a fair statement. Library is not a terrible pick. That's that's a that's a good point that it's just like it, it adds something to to the opener. Could we be looking for Isochron Scepter from Patrick? <laughs> Ooh, Scepter Chant. Now. That would be sweet. Now there's there's a name I haven't <laughs> yeah. heard in many years. <laughs> yeah. That's old school. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love Scepter Chan. I love just locking people down. I'm a terrible person, I'm so sure. I'm into it. Jason Rin's prodigy. All right, Chad another is just getting all those nice control cards. Little Ooh. baby Jace here, very powerful card. Something that I often see go quite a lot earlier. Luke completing the circle here with Sword of the Meek, but uh, just one of the more. What? We're so close. Oh no. Of course, Sword of the Meek combines well with Thopter Foundry. And you, make a th you, you sacrifice the sword, you make a Thopter, you gain a life, you return the uh, Sword of the Meek to the, directly to the battlefield, attach it to the Thopter, you sacrifice Sword of the Meek again, you repeat infinite times Isle of Walk Walk. Now, I want to talk about this. Classic. I don't think there's a there's no, is there no dash in Isle of Walk Walk? Is that also what Pete is doing? Oh, it's Island of Walk Walk. Is, oh, it's Island? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Jeez. So, wow. the power of target wow. creature with flying becomes zero until end of turn. It's a different maze of it <laughs> yes it is, a, it is a maze of it for flying creatures i guess pete does now okay does pete just not like patrick what's so, going on here it's not even just patrick i mean you look at kevin's deck it's all flyers that's true so like there is a you know maybe but like maze of it i mean right yeah this just yeah maze of it perhaps could be a card. Inventor's Fair for Mark, Leyline for Kevin, along with Damping Sphere, picking up some of those contested hateful cards here. Sure, sure. Um, Kevin looking to, to have a sideboard against Redbeard. Heidi with Goblin Engineer and Graft Digger's Cage. I love the cage to go with the uh, with the Urza Saga. I am, I am interested in Goblin Engineer over Welder. Um, obviously, Goblin Engineer does search up an artifact and put it in your graveyard, but Goblin mm -hmm. Engineer, of course, with that, that mana value 3 restriction. Um, True, but I think in the singleton format, a tutor, it's essentially a tutor. Right. She has a trash, a treasure, she has all these options. I think it works better than Welder in most situations, especially in this type of format. In That's my probably too. Probably. Probably pick yeah. up the welder later too. I like the Dothy Voidwalker oh, from Mark. What a card! I love Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, I, I want to talk about this Leyline Prowler from War the Spark. Okay, yep, that's, that's a two-three interesting life linker. Uh, interesting. No, like ignoble hierarch. No, 
Right. I don't know. I think there's a lot of other options. There's a lot of other cards I would take. I don't think now. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't uh, know what to, I legitimately don't know what to say about <laughs> yeah. Leyland Growler. Yeah, I'm, I'm I don't I'm not there. I don't I'm I'm not wherever Pete is, I'm not I'm also not there. And that's okay. Ignoble still out there. Many yeah. other um I think we can safely say better cards still out there, and that's okay. But but this I do not understand. And I don't think I can be made to understand. <laughs> I, I, I really only want to say nice things. We're all nice people here, but I don't get it, and I'll leave it there. So. It's true. The skews from Luke. That's right. interesting. So um, Luke, <laughs> this is elaborate risk control mark. I mean, after Island of Black Black, <laughs> who the hell knows, right? Yeah. This is definitely one of my more oddball of the ODs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm interested. I might ask uh, Pete in one of the breaks. Yeah. The Leyline Brower pick or. Was he thinking of a different card? I'm not sure. I per, per, perhaps maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll go up after between between <laughs> yeah. rounds this time. I'll send Pete down to you. Yeah, you can, you can mean... talk to Pete. <laughs> I can take some ibuprofen because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I no. don't know. Mana leak, not a terrible option. I mean, yep. bad late game, but what can you do? I mean, <laughs> they can't all be good, but I like I really like it. It's good counter spell. You're gonna get a lot of people. Same with the mana tithe. But it's just this is better. It's yeah, blue. So. Elish Norn, arguably the third piece of that that suite of uh, uh, of reanimation creatures. Iona still out there. I like Iona. I love Iona. <laughs> I think it has a place here, and I think it can do a lot of damage to a lot of people. I'm being told by chat, quote, "This is just how Pete drafts." All right, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the Norn makes hella sense with Bitter Blossom. Yes, those are friends. However, yeah. But I, one of the things that I really appreciate about my reanimation target is I would like to win the game for me by itself, no help, just True. just just the one, just the one card. But True. I do like the combo potential. I see yeah. it. I understand it. By force. force. Okay. Now let's talk about by force because I think this is an error, an unforced error, as it were. So we've got by force X and a red sorcery destroy X target artifacts. You should go grab inside bird cards early. Shattering I mean, Spree. Yeah. Shattering Spree costs... Shattering Spree gets you one artifact per one red mana you spend, right? Yeah. I guess if you don't have a lot of red mana, by force does it. But, you know, other cards are out there. Vandal Blast is out there. Meltdown is out there. And I think Meltdown is deeply underappreciated. Yeah, um, not expector from Patrick. Oh, the hippie. I just want to put Meltdown on the screen because I want to feel smart. Um, so this it's an oldie but goodie. X yeah. and a red destroy each artifact with mana value X True. or less. I mean, that card seems insane against Mark. I mean, it seems yeah. like you could do a lot of value against the other people with artifact heavy stuff. Folks, if you want to just make the artifact player cry at your next <laughs> VRD, Meltdown. pick Meltdown. Yeah, absolutely. Stop picking these other cards and pick Meltdown. I promise you'll be happy. Yeah. Now, in their defense, a lot of them are newer VRD yes, players. Yes, yes. I think there's still a lot of learning oh, that can yeah. be done. Even, the, even in the veteran players, Mark is, you know, has spreadsheets open, statistics, everything on his laptop, and he still feels like he's making mistakes, you know. It's not a thing that you could just easily go into and be the best at yeah, it. Yeah, this format is hard. It is yeah. unsolved. It is nascent, and by its nature, it's just not going to get played enough to ever be like, well, this is exactly the right thing to do all the time. Which right? is awesome. That's, that's it. why it's great. Yeah, I love and it. And we're all going to make mistakes when we draft. Mm -hmm. I made plenty of mistakes in my first VRD, my second VRD, oh. my third VRD, and when I get to my fourth VRD, VRD you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a crap ton of mistakes. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure if I ever do my first, it's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy picks all around. <laughs> Mason, Mason putting some heat out there on Dark Ritual and Lotus Petal. <laughs> Search for Ascanta for Chad. Again, trying to go into this full control strategy here. I love Search for Ascanta. I am a huge fan of that card. I've had a lot of fun yeah. uh, turning Search for Ascanta into that land side. Oh, yeah. Ascanta it's the Suck and Ruin. Yeah. Fantastic card. A taxi and Probe for Luke. Just sure. looking for... Classic. Good consistency. Yeah. Like, that card's great. Free Cantrip. Gives you a little extra velocity. Smooth things yeah. out. Gives you information. All very powerful <laughs> things. Yeah. Good generic card, I approve. Oh, yes. So my problem is, 
if I do a BRD, mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. gonna force Nexus of Fate. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go all in, and it's just gonna be terrible. Oh, <laughs> it's I gonna love be it. some control amalgamation with Nexus of Fate kind of slotted in there with the Wilderness Reformation. Something bad has happened to our sheet. Up, oh, we're deleting things. Undo, undo, folks. Control Z. Control Z. Or Command Z. I don't know what platform we're on. Inquisition of Kozilek. I, I can see that Pete is trying to take Davriel. Um, uh, the Brandon Sanderson planeswalker, of course. I'm in. Pete looking to, to put some put some oh. discard out there. Sure. I mean, it seems like he is going the Boomer Jun route, as you're mentioning. Um, I still don't understand some of his land picks. Yeah. He wants to slot in the blue, but I don't think sliding in blue is so. He got the twin cast. He's remember that. Yeah, we, he's got the twin <laughs> cast. We could, I don't know what he's going to do with that, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's he does he does seem to be trying to dip into uh, what some might call moist jund, I believe, <laughs> wet jund, damp jund. All right, calm down, okay, okay. <laughs> please. <laughs> It's very important that I get to say something terrible at least once a day. I'm taking, I'm shooting my shot right now. Yeah, see the enlightened tutor. That's yes. something Mark was mentioning to me. He was like, "I think I'm going to use this to do what I need to do with grindstone painter servant." I think like that's his goal. I feel, I feel smart. I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Got to say something stupid and feel smart in like mm. a 15 second window. It's just the full range of human emotions. <laughs> I do like Davriel. I think that's a great yeah. way to put pressure on people's hands. When you don't get the Liliana, something like Davriel can be very powerful. It looks like Kevin's grabbing a side of her cards. Mm. I think we're still early. We're so early. We're still in the first half of the draft. I think a lot of these picks seem too early for me. I don't know. I could be wrong. This I'm not a very veteran VRD player. This is just what I think, you know. I've started I've started trying to pick good sideboard cards really? around pick twenty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. Around pick 20, you've solidified most of your good main deck cards. Yeah. And any of your main deck cards that you need, you can pick like 35 plus at this point because nobody else cares about them, right? Gotcha. So at this point, now is the time to start taking advantage of people who are going to pick too many main deck cards and start taking sideboard cards early so okay. that they have nothing left when they get there. That makes sense. Okay. And especially here in this seat, Kevin taking Pything Needle out from under Heidi, who does have that Urza Saga, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And has said, I have Urza Saga, I know about it, I'm going to take this Graf Digger's Cage. Mm-hmm. Now is when you take the Needle. Yeah. She reacts very well here, taking the Red Elemental Blast, which I'm sure Kevin would have been happy to do. No, other way around. Kevin got the Pyro Blast. Oh, right. she's I see got, the Red Elemental Blast. She's okay, got Red yeah, Elemental Blast. Now, yeah. now Faithless are then Kevin. Yeah. Kevin grabbed his Pyro Blast yeah. when, you know, it seemed limited. Now, Pyro Blast is the slightly better card it has the, the teeny tiniest edge um in that you can just target whatever yeah. right counter target spell if it is blue or destroy target permanent if it is blue so if yeah. some idiot is playing phantasmal image and by idiot i mean genius um <laughs> because only a genius would be able to make that work right if some genius is playing phantasmal image you could get them right with fire blast if it's even if it's not a blue thing right now yeah Uh, but doesn't it's I don't think that I think there's a one in two hundred thousand chance of that ever mattering. Does come up most with the Dak Faden ultimate, and Heidi does have Dak Faden, so something to learn for next time. Opposition agent for Mark. Ooh, I love it. Sometimes it blows them out. Yeah. Sometimes it takes them out of the game. I love that card. And many many of the very good tutors are in the hands of the opponents, right? We've got Demonic yeah. Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, um, Mystical Tutor, Fetchlands, Fetch Lands, you know. Imperial Seal, all out there, all in other players' decks. Yeah. Very excited to see Mark get somebody with Opposition Agent. It's going to happen at least once today, I'm quite sure. Interested to see what Pete picks here. Pete taking another Ashiok. We have Ashiok Nightmare Weaver now. That's the, that's the original flavor Ashiok, right? Yeah, because... Nightmare. Nightmare Weaver, yep, that's the original Ashiok from Theros. Of course, the other Ashiok that went earlier for Heidi is Ashiok Dream Render from War of the Spark that shuts down tutoring. Mm-hmm. But Ashiok Nightmare Weaver, a surprisingly powerful force in a format like this, 
if you are able to take control of the board and set up an attrition game. Mm -hmm. I don't see Pete's deck being able to do that necessarily, but powerful card all the same. I agree. Yeah. The more I look at it, the more I like the scavenging ooze for Luke. Yeah. I think that's going to do a lot of work today. Heidi's got graveyard action. Um, Kevin's got a little bit of graveyard action. Uh, Patrick. Of course, Patrick has plenty of graveyard stuff. Perfect Redbeard has a little bit. You know, Chad's got that Snapcaster Mage. There's a lot for Skews to do here. Cryptic yeah. Command, solid. Just a good card. I like that. I'm interested to see the Archmage's charm. I think Chad's going to grab it. Because mm. it's just a good card. I mean, it does. It has a lot of potential in this format. I played Archmage's yeah, charm in my, in my blue-white control deck. I was pretty happy with it. Oh, but yeah. I would have definitely been happier with it. <coughs> Pardon me if I'd had more early interaction, you know? Yeah. But I would not be surprised to see Chad take it. I think Luke... Cause Luke okay, Luke's got the Delta. He's got the Bayou. He's got the Watery Grave. So he's got some fixing now. So it is somewhat realistic for him to play a deck with both Cryptic Command and uh, Leovold, right? Yeah. But that might be... I think Luke's mana might be his undoing. I worry about this three-color deck. Now, that's a negative of any format is the amount of, uh, yeah, channel. Absolutely. I mean, that's a double green spell right there. Yeah, that's a little bit. That's Counter, a little counter bit rough. mana drain. Like he has a lot of double colors, and I, I'm scared that's gonna bite him. Many, later. many double pip cards for sure. Um, Jace the Mind Sculptor, another double pip card. Yeah, that could be tough. If I'm Luke here. I'm am starting to dig into into my lands sheet, right? I'm saying, all right, what are the the tier two, tier three lands for my strategy, and how do I make sure I basically just get all of them? Yeah. And which which I hate because I hate to give up so many slots to just mana fixing to get you into the three colors you need. Yeah, it's tough because then you you lose access to. At this point in the draft, you're you're fighting with yourself. Do I pick Do I pick these these lands? Do I pick powerful sideboard cards? You yeah. know, how do I shore up my deck from here? And and yeah. you you're gonna lose something in that exchange, no matter what you do. Well, speaking of powerful sideboard cards, I like the Kataki War Mage oh. from Chad. Kataki's like just absolutely backbreaking against yeah. some of these artifact heavy decks. Absolutely. I mean, he could also energy flux later. Like he has a lot of good options. <laughs> so things are moving very fast here. Dark Depths followed by Vampire Hex Mage for Patrick. Classic two card combo and Redbeard picking up some sweet, uh, some some good filtering. Preordain and expressive iteration. What yeah. a great card. Yeah, expressive iteration, very good. Absolutely one of my favorites. And we got the Dark Depths combo with Patrick. I'm sure Mark is a little disappointed to not have access to that, but you also don't want to fill your deck with too many two card combos, mm -hmm. right? If you have three or four and you're just drawing half of each thing, you're just junking up your hand with a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, and the positive of Marco when I was talking to him outside, mm -hmm. he said he was thinking about the Dark Depths, but he didn't want to do it. He yeah. cut it out later, so I don't think he was going in that direction anyway. So lucky for him, somebody just went ahead and took it, and yeah. he wasn't even going to be in that lane. I think that's smart because he's you know he's got the painter servant. He'll pick up the grindstone mm -hmm. and then he'll have the Karn and the uh, the lattice, right? Because yeah. nobody else is going to take that lattice from him. Most I'm likely, I'm sure he's going to take a lattice eventually. Yeah, but. he can wait, but um, but yeah, what that means is he's got these two vectors for for just straight up victory. Yeah, uh, or one for victory, one to just lock his opponent out, and so he can just kind of take good cards now. He doesn't have to think about taking too many more combo cards. He Absolutely. can just try to choke his opponent out with. Uh, with, with cards like Opposition Agent, Deathy, Voidwalker that prey on their strategies. Yeah, I think he's going to be able to go into a very, you know, death and taxes, good starters, yeah. discard outlet. Like, I mean, I'm a big fan of that strategy I, in this format. Yeah, I mean, creatures. Yeah. Dudes, I mean. <laughs> creatures you know, are great. They are. I hate creatures in any <laughs> constructed format, but yeah. in limited, they're just good. You have to kill them somehow. Somehow you have to win the game. Dove and I don't even have to tell the drafters to hold. We're back. Uh, we got Dove in Hand of Control up on up on here. I'm sure this is a card that Mark might have liked to have. Artifact instant sorcery spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast, and you can minus one to I like that. Block. I think it hits a lot of people. It really does. It hits the entire chart. Luke picks up Stoneforge to go with that, uh, that call to complete. That's a fourth color for Luke, though. Do you think we're going to abandon the Leovold here with the value yeah. in the Watery Grave? 
I feel like that's a choice. I mean, he could just go good card dot deck. Yeah. But Leovold might be just too too much to be able to fit in there. Yeah. But he also has so many double pips. It's, right. He's got the it's double It's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's awkward. I think it's just, it's awkward because, yeah, taking the Stoneforge Mystic, you, you, you lose out on that, the the black from the bayou and the grave and the, the help that gets you from the delta. That's a little awkward. So yeah. I don't know about that one. Liliana Dreadhorde General, though. Wow. Wow. I like that. Very powerful limited card. Six mana Planeswalker. Draws yeah. you lots of cards. Makes makes zombies. I would have liked that for Mark. Honestly, because he has the ramp to get him he there. He does have the mana. Pete, I think, is going to have trouble getting to six. Yeah. But whenever a creature you control dies, you draw. Makes zombies. Yeah. Uh, casts Barter in Blood. And, of course, that ultimate is just wild. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be able to do it against, like, Chad, who's not planning the win super early. Yeah. Everyone else in, Ch in the, you know, draft seems very aggressive. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a question of, it's a question of how fast these decks end up being, right? That's right. I think, I, I do think this, this draft looks a little slower, potentially, but it's, you know, that things could speed up. People could pick up some, sure. some faster tools. There are a lot of mana dorks out there. All the green mana dorks are still, the one mana mana dorks out there are just, just still exist. Noble, yeah. ignoble, you know, elves of deep shadow, birds of paradise, whatever you want, land or else. It's all out there. Green has definitely been, you know, very undervalued this yes. draft, I think, and I'm interested to see if somebody's going to hop on that boat or not. Mm -hmm. They're just going to keep fighting for the other four colors. Yeah, green, green definitely underappreciated often, especially uh, in the green, green and white often often get underappreciated by drafters who are not as familiar with the format. I find sure, but uh, there's a lot of powerful cards. I in love there. it. Creatures, yeah, they're just good. <laughs> creatures I, are good, I, folks. If you play a bunch of creatures, yeah, you're gonna kill them somehow. Yeah, like it's just that easy. As as someone who recently played cards like Eldrazi Mimic and beat people yeah. up with them. Creatures are good, folks. Heck yeah, that sounds awesome. Mark closing up his uh, combo his combo loops here. Grindstone to go with the Painter's Servant, Mycosynth Lattice with the Karn, Vandal Blast, and Kolagon's Command for Kevin. Kolagon's Command, of course, an outstanding card. Sure. I think it's going to be really good in, in this format as well. Meanwhile, Heidi reaction. looking to shore up her artifact position. Foundry Inspector to give herself a discount on all of her mm -hmm. artifacts. And Bomac Courier, just, you know, a solid one drop to search up with that... Uh, with with that Urza saga something to, to help her generate some, some more card velocity. And I'm sure she doesn't mind taking it from Kevin, who might have, <laughs> yeah. who, who who at least looks like he might want it, even if he actually doesn't. Because of course, not so good with the Heartless Summoning. Obviously Ragavan not good with the Heartless Summoning either either, but it's Ragavan. Who cares? Who it's cares? still Ragavan. That's good. <laughs> that card's just absurd. I know. Arguably bannable in Legacy. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, oh, Delver decks? You mean Ragavan decks? <laughs> just, it's just so, so strong. You get so much mana out of it. You get so much card advantage out of it. Mm. It's an unreasonable card. Well, it looks like we lost the E out of Liliana Dreadhorde General. These things happen. But we have this we have this great sheet that makes sure that cards haven't been picked before and also makes sure that every card is a real card. But if you don't spell something right, it does get mad. Yeah. Karn's Bastion. Now that is a the the Is he going super friends? I'm in. Yeah. Sounds so spicy. Karn's Bastion, of course, taps for a colorless and then foreign tap proliferate. Let's take a look at that. Or another War of the Spark card. So so Pete looking like a uh he's he's drafting War of the Spark All Stars here. Now, the mana is bad. Yes, the mana is not good right now. We've got the Overgrown Tomb, the Taiga, and the Breeding Pool, and the Underground Sea. Oh, they have the Catacombs, too, the Tarn. He's got some options. Now... I'm so sad. He's getting away from World Gorger. Yeah. I understand. It's not It's not amazing. It's, you know, two-card combo, but three-card combo. I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> now, now, yes, this, this, this spreadsheet is a fork of the spreadsheet that Hyphenated made. Um, one of one of the... the, the protectors the stewards of this format in our discord and just a, a really fun person to talk to and play magic with so thanks hyphenated shout outs to you uh savannah for luke so luke is looking to dip into that white making that commitment maybe stepping away from that leofold here 
Steven making a case for the potential overrating of Ragavan and VRD if the draft is heavy on creatures. If it ends up being creature heavy, then they've got the blockers and that card just gets worse. Interesting. I think if you are playing a more focused red deck with more burn spells and you can clear the way, I'm still very high on Ragavan. But once you step into the zone that Kevin's in where you're doing something else and you're not playing a billion lightning bolts, I do <laughs> think it is a little worse. Yeah. But, you know, in this draft's events, it doesn't seem like a very creature-heavy mm. so far, at least. I don't know, you know what the later picks are going to look like. Yeah, I think there's still definitely a lot of room. I, I agree that there's a lot of room for, like, for Ragavan to come down in the early turns and just beat people up. Yeah, and, I mean, worst-case scenario, you could just dash it in, get, get the immediate value out of him, pay two every turn. I mean, in late game, yeah, you'll have that two mana. It's not going to stop you too much. Right, what else are you doing with that mana exactly. at that point? Yeah, especially in this type of deck where you're always proactive, always playing stuff in your turn. Right. As long as the board's clear, you just, you know, you get in yeah, and you get people... In. It also could prioritize blocks. Mm -hmm, I might mm -hmm. not want to take a Ragavan as right. opposed to other cards, you know, stuff like that. Monastery Mentor for Chad. Chad looking for another way to close out the game with True Name Nemesis. Mm. Already held by Heidi. He's got the, the Vendillion Click. He's got a couple other options, but Monastery Mentor, an interesting pickup for sure. I love Chad's deck. I'm not going to lie. I think it's I pretty am, sweet. I am high on, you know, Blue X Control always. My wonder, my, what I wonder is, A, does he have enough mana fixing? Because, no, he doesn't. Uh, I don't think, anyway. He, he probably mm -hmm. needs a couple more pieces. And B, I think it's probably time to start taking some of the powerful sideboard cards here. True. I don't think he's gone. He, I don't think he invested as much into it as I think he should. I mean, the War Rage is good. The Kentucky. Yeah. But, but we, can, we can take more of those. Worm Coil Engine for Patrick. Frantic Search and Mystical Dispute for Redbeard. Redbeard looking to protect the investment with that Storm deck here. Frantic Night Search. Nighthawk Scavenger. Nighthawk Scavenger. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So Patrick says, I want to have something to do in the mid game if I get... I guess if my graveyard gets blown up. I'm not 100% there yet. I don't totally understand. But it's a, it's a solid card. Remand has already been picked, unfortunately, for Chad. Ragavan will benefit from the revolution of how aggro decks are drafted in this format. Can't wait for Red to stop burning early picks on cards like Goblin Guide and Lightning Bolt. Amen! I am right there with you. Let's see. Let's see aggro decks. Red players start picking up contested cards, powerful cards mm -hmm. in the early game, and then just pick up those Goblin Guides and Lightning Bolts Later. Way later, yeah. because yeah, no, I agree. no one else wants them. But that's kind of been Kevin's whole thing now, anyway. Yeah. So many of his picks could have been done way mm -hmm. later. But I think he's just delving deep into what he wants to do. I want to see a logic come from Chad. Ooh. I don't know if he thinks about it. I don't know, because he doesn't play much modern. He you know, plays mainly Commander and Draft. Logic knocks an old modern card. Yeah. Now I've... they have Counterspell Archmage just trying. It's kind of been phased out. Yeah. But it's still good. I think Logic Knot would be a great pickup here, yeah, absolutely. If, he really, if he's really wanting some counter spells, I think, you know, Logic Knot's, uh, you know, a yeah. decent option. A few of these decks need some Rabble Master. This whole format needs more Rabble. Yeah. Give me Rabble hey, Master. Absolutely. I love Rabble Master. I love Legion War Boss. Yeah. I love Rabble Master. Mm -hmm. I love those cards. If Me I play red, too. I play those cards because. Whew. Just a, a, a one card army, absolutely. Yeah. Powerful, very powerful card. Something that something that invalidates the previous couple turns says this is just too good. Containment priest. Okay, Chad has uh, Chad's picking up some sideboard, sideboard yeah. cards here, looking to fight Patrick about these reanimation cards. Although Patrick may be leaning into sort of a backup plan, like we talked about, just having other things to cast. Yeah. I wonder if we see Lake of the Dead from Patrick. I'd like that. Yeah, that'd be such a sweet pick. I'm down. <laughs> too bad we don't have... Uh, or it's too bad for him that Mark has the Dark Ritual. We're not going to see Turn 1 Ritual Hippie. <laughs> yeah. That would bring me back. Oh, I've, I've played enough old school. I've, I felt that. <laughs> I felt that deeply. <laughs> oh, I love that. I, I love... You know, I... I I haven't I haven't had somebody go ritual hippie against me since high school. Yeah. And so, you know, it's been twenty years or whatever. Another double pip spell from Luke. I am worried. Yeah. I am very worried about where he is going, what he's doing. 
I like all his cards. I like mm-hmm. him a lot. Oh, yeah. I'm scared for his mana. Yeah, I think Luke's going to lose quite a few games to mana issues here. Yeah. Um, and if I'm Chad, I'm also kind of bummed missing out on Council's Judgment, right? True. It's a solid removal spell for that deck. It's great, yeah. Just exile, target, permanent. I, I feel like, and it's not very likely with this Neil Tim but I feel like I'm going to see a true name nemesis come down from Heidi against Chad. Yeah. Chad's going to look at his judgmentless hand and be yep. like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Council's Judgment. I have no I have no access to cards like Marsh Casualties, right? I have yeah. no way to get this card off yeah. the board. I'm just, I just need to counter it really is. Pete. Delving into the gr- blue now, he's it's he's, happening. Uh, he's going four color. Four it's, color. He's in a four color. Mark Rabin is rest in peace, sir. Yeah, great side work guard. Absolutely great. A harsh mentor. Um, and I, my guess is that we'll see Mark pick up a, a helm potentially. Harsh mentor here to punish activated yeah, abilities. Yeah. It's a decent side work card in a vintage esque format. Yep. Um, if it's not a mana ability, harsh mentor is going to shock you. I actually like that. Is Mark Zek actually a decent deck for balance? I agree. Especially when I was talking to him, he was talking about like nine lands is like what his you know, overall thing was. I think he could easily LD a lot of people with yes. balance and that type of card. He's also very... Yeah, that's interesting. Balance. Mm. I like that a lot. Because he's not reactive. His hand's going to be practically zero the entire time. Hey, look what Mark just picked. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, we're already there. Okay. <laughs> He's on the same page. Yeah, right, He's yeah, into yeah. balance. That's <laughs> well, well spotted, folks. Well spotted. Balance is going to be great for Mark. Mm-hmm. I think he's really going to enjoy that. Heidi picking up Mirror Retriever and Hope of Girapur, another great, another great anti combo card. All right. Here's the question. Yes. Heidi grabbed Mirror Retriever. Mm-hmm. KCI combo. She has the sigh. She has all these interesting, you know, cards. She has a snare bridge in case the game's not looking her way. Oh my god! Can she do a KCI combo? Which I'm also a fan. I'm a big KCI player. I when love it, when it was still KCI. legal and modern. Yeah, and when it was still legal, ooh, it was a good time. I love KCI. I, I remember that first GP where KCI really popped off. Yeah. I uh, oof. <laughs> we, we got our sheet master here in our oh, chat. Hyphenated, what is up? Good to see you. A lot of f- fantastic VRD folks here in the chat. Um, just yeah. as a reminder for anybody who might have stepped in recently or not not caught the beginning of this draft, what we have today here is the St. Lotus presents. We've got uh, we've got a group of judges out here in the St. Louis area, very excited about VRD, very happy about the this cool cool format, wanting to try it out for the first time. So that means we have six first time drafters in this in this pod, along with Kevin doing his second draft and Mark doing his third, Mark's first in a couple of years here. Um, so this is going to possibly look a lot different than some of the BRDs you've seen. Please be kind. Please be gentle. We've got a lot of learning, a lot of people having a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can hear the clapping upstairs, <laughs> but uh, I think people are very excited that uh, yeah, Chad figured out tundra. the Tundra was yeah. still still around. Yeah. Uh, I have, you know, when I draft, I have, I have a, a voluminous Excel spreadsheet, right? I have a, yeah. a big Excel oh, yeah. book with all kinds of stuff in it, and one of them is the don't forget to take your lands sheet, that like that I just look I'm like okay time to control F for my lands yeah. just copy control F Dovin Dovin's still on the board Dovin hand of control has been taken um Dovin uh, any other Dovins are up for grabs Dovin bond Dovin the other one Dovin maybe a fourth I think there's only three Dovins I think there's only three uh there's like a dual deck one or like a, a starter deck one I'm pretty sure oh, yeah, no no one's gonna play no one's gonna play that <laughs> Avison, Angel of Hope. Now that's eight mana Avison, right? That's yeah, the good Avison. That's the indestructible okay. one, yeah. Red no Beard. rod. Whew. Oh, <laughs> poor Mark. <laughs> Brazen Bar. That's a good choice. Brazen Bar, a great very, card. Yeah, um, versatile. Yes. Yeah. And yes, Null, Null Rod looks at Mark's deck and says, "No, it does nothing." Of course, oh. the just the classic oh. shutting down of all of your Moxon. I put it on the board. I didn't know if you saw Pete take a Vampire Nighthawk. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, but I went ahead and put it up on the board. For anyone who does not know, Vampire Nighthawk. <laughs> Vampire, Vampire Nighthawk. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we are back. Sorry about that brief interruption, but it looks like we uh, we barely had any time to talk about Imp's Mischief. Fantastic pick. Have you have you played this card in Commander or any, any oh, yeah. format? Oh, yeah. I mean, when you don't have the blue cards, when you don't, you know, have this good interaction colors, 
It's just a good card. I yep. mean, it deals with the stack, which Black is not very good at. Right. Imp's Mischief, a $100 foil, yeah. Uh, one of the notable ways to use Imp's Mischief, if I cast a spell and you counter my spell, I cast Imp's Mischief, and as Imp's Mischief is resolving, I'm going to change the target of your counter spell to my Imp's Mischief. Yeah. And by the time your counter spell goes to resolve, well, it doesn't do a very good job. Yeah. Uh, many players will try to use Imp's Mischief to redirect a counter spell to itself. Of course, a spell is never a legal target for itself. Keep that in mind. But it does work the way I mentioned. Caracas coming down, Hallowed Fountain. Heroic intervention for Pete, looking to protect his creatures from. Mark got his other two card combo, which, I mean. Yep, there's he has, the home. He has the Karn, so, I mean, he has a lot of options to, you know prevent his dead draws yes indeed bitter ordeal a, a vrd favorite here for kevin um if kevin can set up some kind of graveyard loop uh he can he can certainly exile an opponent's entire deck um it is regrettable that he does not have access to world Gorger combo here <laughs> yeah. uh although bitter ordeal of course the sorcery it's a little it's a little hard to set that up it takes yeah. a lot of work but it's funny when it works Torrential Gear Hulk from Hyrule. I love that card. That's a great card. Yeah. Very powerful. Fat Snacker. Oh, our dad. Fat Caster. That's <laughs> what the kids used to call it back yeah. in the day. It's, a, it's, it's big. It costs six mana, and it will get... Is that, that going to be it? Zerta the Dawn Waker? <gasps> Whoa. She's got Grim Monolith. So. Now... All activated abilities? No, I don't think she should be able to do it. But no. main deck is still very powerful. Yeah, we're going to see this played in the main deck. We're not going to see it as a companion. Yeah. I think most companions are now pretty bad in VRD. I've seen Lutri a couple times. I tried to play Lutri myself recently. You actually just never have time to pay... <clears throat> you never have time to pay three mana at sorcery speed to draw it. It just sure. doesn't happen. That's fair. And I mean, it still seems free, though, mm -hmm. if you have nothing else to do. Yeah. I mean, because of this singleton format. Now, my question is... Blairs is banned in Vintage, right? Yeah. He's still banned even after the companion change. Or did Vintage. they did they unban Luris? I forget. I don't remember either. But like Luris is not a terrible option, but as you mentioned, paying three is a lot. It is Luris a lot. Is unbanned. Okay. Mark yeah. Luris is unbanned. Fantastic. Mark picking up Basalt Monolith, seeing the Zerta knows that if he wants <laughs> yeah. Basalt Monolith for that big colorless mana, he needs it now before Heidi takes it. And there's a Luris from Pete. Luris is unbanned. Pete says, Hey, I remember Luris. I'm going to take Luris. Of course, we are not going to see Luris out of the companion slot for Pete. No, oh, no. We've got so many big things, but you can just main deck it. And it's still fine in the main deck. Oh, yeah. As long as he's got, you know, enough to do with. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> let's, do, let's do a quick review. What, the, what permanence does Pete have that he can use that with? Croxa? I'm going to make that. Animate dead. Bigger dudes. Croxon, animate dead. Yeah, I don't Croxon, see a lot. Croxon, animate dead. I see, I see two uh, see two targets only. Well, Pete's got some work to do. Sure. I mean, we're, we just went over half of the amount of time, so he has a lot of time to get. He yep. has a lot of availability to get some targets. There's plenty of room left on this runway. Hyphenated providing a solid counterpoint to my to my dislike of Lutri. Um, I don't know. And in Hyphenated's point, I like it in control. Yeah. I like, had it in control, I, I, I think and I didn't, didn't like it. <laughs> sure. But, but it's free. That's yes. my thing. It's it's free if you, for some reason, run out of options. It gives you something yes. to do. I, I will say that I picked... One of the mistakes I made in that draft was I picked Lutri way too early. I took oh, it like sure. sixth or something. It, it would be very late for me if I got yeah. it. Yeah. I should have taken it like down here. Yeah. And I would have been much happier with it. But I spent a very valuable pick on it, and that was a huge mistake. So that may have colored, unfairly colored my opinion of it. Mm -hmm. And as with anything in, in VRD in a format with so little exploration, if you have a deeply held and unchangeable opinion about a card that, like, you know, has ever been any good, mm -hmm. you you should be willing to change it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you're wrong in some way. City of Traders still good for many of these decks. Yeah. I'm a big City of Traders fan. I think I can see it in Mark's deck. I think Mark, if he wants to go the low land route that he wants to go mm -hmm. City of Traders, absolutely amazing in a very low land, you know, deck. City of Traders was very good for me in the in the Eldrazi Taxes deck I played in VRD seven. Yeah. Um I think Mark could certainly run it here and be quite happy. Oh yeah, I agree. 
And, you know, if you end up discarding it to Mox Diamond, so it goes. We'll see if he even plays Mox Diamond. Uh, with the way he's talking, I don't think, but we'll talk on the break and see yeah. if he's changed his mind. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go do some recon during the break, grab you a drink if you want, and uh, send, send you somebody. Yeah, Who'd... whoever whoever we feel yeah. we need to talk to and trying to understand what they're doing. Ah, oh, crap. Did we DC again? I think we did. The box is red. Oh, it's yellow. It's green. Hey, yeah, we were gone for a second, but we're back. <laughs> um, hey, chat, if you if there's anybody you want us to interview during this upcoming break, which is coming in just a couple of picks here, go ahead and sound off now. So if there's somebody you want us to interview during the break, go ahead and put their name in the chat, and uh, we'll see what we can do. We interviewed Kevin, of course, during the last break. He's planning to take Heartless Summoning. I don't want to say it too loud. But uh, it's very exciting, so we'll see how that goes for him. Yeah. I'm glad he's picking it late. Yeah. I'm glad he has not dedicated a slot to Heartless Summoning yet. He knew. He came down here. He was like, I don't have to pick it until like, the very end. I yeah. was like, yeah, I think you're I, right about I that. I wish he could have put some of that foresight into his early picks with mm -hmm. the dragons and stuff like that. But Definitely. It's a learning, it's a yeah. learning curve, you know. And I think at the end, I think at the end of the day, he's going to have much the same thing to say about his own deck. Yeah. You know? I I don't want to I don't want I didn't want to give him any advice any strategy advice during the draft portion. Mm. I was just like yes yes, absolutely. But after the draft, you know anybody anybody who wants my thoughts on their on their my unvarnished thoughts on their draft yeah. is absolutely going to get them. Kevin, Kevin or Heidi. Heidi? Well, we've already talked to Kevin, so I'll take that as a vote for Heidi. I don't want to. I mean, I love Kevin. He's great. I just don't think we would be terribly well served by interviewing yeah. him a second time. But if you missed the first one, I super hear that. Sword of Fire and Ice for Luke to go with the Stone Forge. Another vote for Heidi. I agree with that. I'm interested to see what Heidi's, Heidi's doing, especially if that Zerda pick. That Zerda pick gives me life. Yeah, I like that a lot. Very cool. Archmage's chart, as you predicted yeah. for Chad. Good call. Which was a good control card. Right? Mm -hmm. I, and I and and there is a. There's a level of value to be able, being able the the third mode, the steal something mode. Yeah. Um. With 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 mana value one, mm -hmm. that mode's a lot better in this format than you might think. Yeah. I mean, I even like it. You know, modern other most constructed formats. Oh yeah. I and I think in this format, it's going to hold a lot of value as well. I mean, worst case scenario is you draw two cards. Yeah. That's still good, right? Drawing two cards. Yeah. Worst right. case scenario, still I, great. I, I've and heard so. two for one is good. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. <laughs> Patrick picking up that Iona. Good to see him complete the trifecta here. Yeah, I think Patrick has been getting a lot better with his deck since Pete has kind of jumped ship from what looked like Raider at the start. Yeah. Thassa's Oracle, sure. Ooh, sure. Thassa's Oracle for Redbeard. You yeah. know, brain, brain freeze myself out and then just go ahead and slam this on the table, True. looking to avoid any kind of uh, Eldrazi shenanigans from the opponent, potentially. I do agree. Ims Miss Shift pick, very fun. I love that card. Ashiak Dream Render is gone. Ashiak Dream Render was picked by Heidi in the first fifteen, I believe. Um, Red has a CDH deck. Sure yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, CDH is one of the formats to be looking at if you want mm -hmm. to do VRD because while obviously those the formats are very different, some of the key cards can be very similar. Yeah. Um, you know, you you can absolutely go with some kind of, you know, Tainted Pack style lion, uh, Thassa's Oracle, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. De Demonic Consultation Thoracle could could certainly be a thing. That kind of that kind of thing, so. Slips Patrick a note that just says Dash Hopes. No! <laughs> no! Don't I'm do it. I'm down. I'm Let's out. go. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm you over there. You know that two mana, deal five damage. That's what that card. You know, I think that's a card for Kevin. I think that's a Kevin card. Dash Plus, hopes. <laughs> classic two mana five damage. Yeah. <laughs> See, I love In's Mischief because it doesn't. The drawback is not true. Give my opponent a True. choice, right? With Dash hopes, I'm like, I don't, I don't even. This, but, uh, but with Kevin's deck, yeah, he seems to get pretty aggressive. Mm, mm. It's two mana counter spell or deal five damage. Both. <laughs> decent. I guess at some point, at some point, there yeah. has to be a Punisher card good enough, where mm -hmm. the the rate is good enough, yeah. and the alternative is good enough. Similar concept of like you know risk factor and yeah. cards like that you know the fact that ri I think what really made risk factor work was the jump start right True. being able to actually True. cast it twice yeah 
I, th- I think that was the thing Very that put good. risk factor over the edge as bad browbeat, right? <laughs> yeah. Because browbeat's bad, right? Browbeat's sure. not. We're, we're, sure. we're all on the same page of browbeat being a bad card. But risk factor, the jump start gives it that edge. Mm-hmm. Patrick taking a little minute to think about this. His last pick before the break. After the break, I find things things really pick up. After, you know, once They start thinking about it, yeah. and then right after the break... Picks just start flying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And especially late in the draft, your options are constrained. It, after the second break, you go, okay, this is what my main deck looks like right now. This is what my sideboard mm-hmm. looks like right now. This is what I need. And pretty much nobody else needs most of what I need. <laughs> we are seeing a lot of the rookie VRD main deck focus here. That is one of the that is one of the biggest foibles for first time VRD players. I fell into that trap uh, my first time around of just uh of just drafting too many main deck cards. Yeah, I agree with Hyphenated. I love Chad's deck. I also I... love Hi- uh, Chad's deck, Hyphenated. I think it's a better version of my deck from the last Discord VRD that I did, um, which, of course, you remember Hyphenated because you played against it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't think he's been getting cut in the blue at all, so no. I think he's been very open. His lane has been very open. It seems like everyone's fighting for black, fighting for artifacts. Most definitely. Well, Chad has just been cruising his yeah. line. I mean, kind of Luke kind of came into his lane a little, but not not very much. Yeah, and then he stepped back out and took yeah. a couple of powerful counter spells, stepped away, and Chad's really got some some good stuff going uh, on. Knight's Whisper for Patrick, a solid card draw spell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the Knight's Whisper. Mark is playing a superior, strictly superior version of your Discord draft. <laughs> you know, it's it's nice to see other people pick up the ball and run it a little further, right? It's nice to see people take take what we're doing and push it a little further toward up. Oh, we postponed the break yeah, by, by one pick. That's fine. Break, yeah. We realized they're finishing the circle and then yep. it. yeah. Yeah. Smart. In. Like it. Like it. Love it. Serum visions for Chad, another solid one mana pickup. We've seen ponder, we've seen preordain. Yeah. Uh, opt and consider are both still out there Open, though. Yeah, I agree. I I like those cards that they dig deep. Um Scrying and surveilling, yeah. both very fa- powerful abilities. Stuff you don't want to see. Get yes. rid of it. I mean, prismatic ending still out there. Yeah, I, I would expect Luke actually to pick up prismatic ending. Yeah, he's already kind of in this four color. You know, not a reason thing that much. But Internet out in the West County is just that bad. I guess I, I don't know. Did we lose connection again and I missed it? I don't know. I didn't see the notification. The box is green. The, yeah. the OBS box is green. So I don't know. Faithful Absence. That's a new card. That's, that's a newer a new card, card, yeah. That's that's a solid card. Let's put that up on the board. Yeah. Faithful Absence. Two mana, destroy target creature or planeswalker, but they get a clue. So they can pay two mana to get a card out of it. Uh, um, you know. I mean, Sometimes destroying that planeswalker and giving them a card is not terrible. It's the same concept with Vendillion Click. Yes. Sometimes you just need to get rid of it. Yep. You know, that's how I feel about like in Commander uh, Tibble's Trickery. Yes. If you're yes, in red, yes. so you just need to get rid of whatever they're doing. Right. And whatever comes next, hopefully, is not as bad. Right. The the if if you if you pick your spots with a card like that, mm-hmm. you know, you can get a lot of value out of it. Same here with with the with <laughs> the the absence exactly. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see how that uh, if if that gets picked up for chat. I think that's a great great option. Yeah. All right. The graveyard hate begins. We saw rest in peace earlier. We saw Bajuka Bog. Here's Tormod's crypt. Yeah. They got like about a rest in peace though for Mark. It's proactive and reactive. He's mm-hmm. dealing with people doing stuff, and he's going to use it to yep. his advantage. I end your graveyard. Your graveyard continues to be inaccessible, and I have this helm to go I'm with the it. game with it. Yeah, sinkhole. Ooh, nice. sinkhole! That's a classic. I do love sinkhole. <laughs> yeah. I it's been a long time since I cast a sinkhole, but <laughs> man, does it feel good just to get people? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I'm on the play. Uh, turn one, black source go. Oh, you play the land. Turn two, another black source sinkhole. <laughs> Welcome to the Stone Ages. It's like plowing during somebody on turn two or three. <laughs> Feels good. I love that card. Mm. I, I keep a foil in the front of my binder just to look yeah. at it. I was like, God, I love this card. Oh, <laughs> I, I just, I love, I love casting plow under. Yeah. I miss it. Yeah. It's been too long, plow under. <gasps> a 
Shane's. I was not going to Andy spelled it correctly. Look Mark, it. Mark. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I would not put it past him. To it looked I'm like sure he copy pasted. Copy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's a copy and paste. <laughs> That's a copy paste job if I ever saw one. Chains of Mephistopheles, of yeah. course, everyone's favorite flowchart in Magic the Gathering. Chains of Meph. And now happening. Island of Walk Walk. Island of Walk Walk <laughs> has been called. Okay, so so we've got the Merciful Masters Edition wording here on Chains of Mephistopheles. If a player would draw a card, except the first one they draw in their draw step each turn. Instead, that player discards a card. <laughs> if they discard a card this way, they draw a card. If they didn't discard a card this way, they mill one. So that's fun, yeah. you know. No, I agree. I like it a lot. Uh, Great card. Only two mana. Hey, Mark knows that card so well, he can spell it in his sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Bone Crusher Giant and Florian Voltaren Scion for Kevin looking to to have some just just good cards. Generic good cards. Bone Crusher, just a great way to clear things away and still have a creature to back it up after. And Florian, uh, a surprise pickup here. Well, not if you heard his interview. (laughs) Yeah. He did talk about it in the, the interview, but it's another way for him to get some card advantage here. Um, if other people are losing life, you draw some more. You, you get some more card advantage, some more velocity. Mark got the Thalia that we were thinking he was probably going to yes. get. Some nice death and taxes. It was already his thing. Love to see Thalia. Uh, Heidi picking up Doretti, Scrap Savant, and Chromatic Star continuing down this potentially KCI, but more Weldery line. Uh, I I'm rooting for KCI I, 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 too. I have to not. I have to do my best not to mention it during the interview. <laughs> Don't say KCI. I believe in you. Yeah, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I won't say it. But, uh, You'll be fine. Yeah. You, you've, Oliana. You've, you've judged events. You yeah, know how to yeah, not yeah. say a strategy. Yeah. Things. Exactly. Oath of Liliana. Oath of Liliana here as another. That's that's another edict, right? I need to pull up a bunch of cards. No, this is the enchantment. Right, but it, I think it, it's a. Is it an edict? Each opponent oh, okay. sacrifices yeah. a creature. All right. At the beginning of the end, each end step, uh, so so during the interview, during the last interview, I actually just totally hid chat. And I think that's what we'll do this time too. We'll keep it. We'll keep it secret. It's much easier that way. Yeah. It's the enchantment edict that also makes zombies if you put a planeswalker on the battlefield. So another piece of uh, a yeah. super friends deck that Pete has drafted a fifth of. I hope he can get more planeswalkers. I hope I, so too. I think he only has like three or four, and he needs more to make that card what we want it to be. Yeah, we got Davriel, Ashiak, Liliana, and that's about it. Hmm. Yeah, we need we need a little bit more. Um, Liliana, the veil was already taken. Yeah. Um, Ashiak, oh, you know, uncommon. War of the Spark, Ashiak was already taken. Yeah. I don't, I don't see a lot about. He is in four color. I should, that should be mentioned. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. The. Uh, Four color, no white currently. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, there's there's options. I don't know. He needs more mana. But uh, as we were reminded earlier by chat, this is how Pete drafts. Yeah. Pete is doing his own thing. And one of the most important things to do in VRD is to have fun. Yeah. This is a really fun format. Absolutely. Have a good time with it. Obviously, you want to try to win. You want to try to, to have a good showing. But at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, what's the point? Sig River Cutthroat is an interesting, interesting call. I don't know how. I don't know if Kevin's deck is set up for double black as well as it might need to be. But Sig River Cutthroat, I think, is great for that kind of deck mm-hmm. if Kevin can cast it. Luke trying to pick up some more Stoneforge uh, yeah. picks. Feast and Famine, of course, one of the the favorites for Stoneforge back in the days of Extended, um, or the the weird Extended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> memory, memory lapse for Chad, another counter spell. Yep, something he picked up not having remand. Night, uh, lightning Greaves for Patrick, hmm, and Redbeard just getting one pick for the break. I guess Patrick just wants to get in there real quick. Yeah, and Redbeard picks up Thought Scour. It's a good pick. Yeah. Alrighty, like folks, we're gonna take a break from the draft. I'm gonna go get a Heidi. I'm just gonna. Speaking of chat, I'm gonna hide it so we're not gonna see you for a minute. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, send Heidi down to talk with Darian and I'm going to actually replace my name with Heidi's name so she doesn't have to look at the wrong name for the entire time. Chat wants to hear from Heidi. Chat wants to hear from Heidi? Uh, I'll get Heidi down in just a second. I had a quick question about an interaction. Sounds good. Um, I will come talk to you about an interaction. Um, 
Shane's a Mephistopheles question. Very exciting. <laughs> Shane's Mephistopheles question is always my favorite. Um, there's actually a couple commander players at one of my stores who play a lot of Chains of Mephistopheles. And usually, most of the time proxies, a couple players have real ones. And it's, it's a rough time for me. I, I have a lot of judge questions for it. Alright, now let's look at Heidi's list. See what she's kind of doing. She grabs KCI, but I don't know. It might be a little much. What's up? Uh, well, Eric told me to come down because uh, Heidi is actually not going to be able to make it down the stairs. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So he told me to come down and have a chat with Chad. Sure. <laughs> or with you. Yeah, come hang out. <laughs> All right. Ah, whatever. We'll just keep your name as Heidi. So, <laughs> I know we talked earlier. You yep. wanted to do like a little storm thing. Um, how do you feel? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I need I, I need to figure out what my sideboard options are because mm -hmm. this was like Plan C, basically. Yeah. I just I did not expect blue to be this open. So it's true. I I didn't think about that either. I thought blue was would be the most picked color when I first you know got yeah. here this morning. But it doesn't look like that's the case this time. Um, what are you kind of hoping to get in these last, you know, couple I, picks? I uh, honestly, I I'm scouring the internet at the moment to <laughs> try and find good sideboard cards for what mm. other people are doing. I, I was very happy to get the null rod that late. Um, I'm probably gonna look for a little bit of graveyard hate mm. uh, to to handle uh, the reanimator decks that are that are floating around. Yeah. And I like it's a little bit hard in blue red because the, the the sweepers are all like damage or bounce based. Sure. But you know, just something to buy a little bit of time against the the couple of like mildly aggressive decks I'm seeing mm -hmm. come together. Sure. So the, like that that's sort of where I'm at. I think uh, they uh, my man I think is in decent shape. Uh, even though I blew a couple of picks on that. Uh, going for the plan A that uh, got abandoned. Um, yeah, I could tell with the strip mine and fast bond, you just were in for yeah. there, and then you're just like, no, nope, get me out of here. Yeah, I'm on the fence about whether, like, I've got so many wheels that the fast bond's probably going to be good anyway. Sure, um, sure. So I, I'm, I, I might leave that in or not, just depending on what the mana looks like. Um, like, I, I could probably grab a, a stomping ground or a uh, something like that to, to just make it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I might grab an Arab Mesa in there just to again, like you know, make have a, have another dual land for the uh, blue red. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think the deck is looking solid at this point. I'm just looking for you know a, a few sideboard pieces. Uh, Maybe try a little bit of spice against uh, the, that chains of Mephistopheles that sure. Mark picked because yeah. that's gonna hose me. <laughs> I, I heard your, I heard your question to Mark, our uh, not Mark, uh, Eric. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, how do you feel about your draft? I'm feeling pretty good. I okay. like I, uh, I I wasted a few picks early, like I said. Um, like this this strip line is probably fifty fifty to make the deck at this point. Mm -hmm. Like it it it's fine. It's not going to be great sure. since I don't have like ways to recur or tutor for it, which mm -hmm. was the original plan. Sure, but uh, <clears throat> it should be pretty. Uh, like uh, and the the 
I guess I'm I'm fine with the trot because again the the uh, with as many wheels as I have that fast one's still gonna be fine. Gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's I did I think the deck is good. I I have you know a couple of alternate win conditions off of the uh, uh, off the breach depending on whether I need to or not. Like I I can. Uh, yeah, I can even just brain freeze myself an oracle. I don't even like. I could probably cut the tendrils all together at this point. Sure. Um, and you know, <clears throat> I'm excited to see how you handle deck construction. Uh, looking at this, you know, 46 cards to see, you know, yeah. what you can make out of it. Um, just to remind the chat, this is not Heidi. Heidi was unable to get to the interviewing area, so Heidi has is, an injured foot, so she can't do the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Redbeard. We're still looking at is what seems to be a storm. You know, pile. I don't know how it's going to look in the final copy, but you're grabbing a lot of, in my opinion, pretty good cards that I think could get you to where you kind of want to be. Yeah, I, I, so. I might want to pick up another counter spell or two, just sure. uh, like to manage that. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I've got good options, and and it's just finding the right sideboard pieces from here. Yeah, I'm interested to see your last uh, chunk of cards that will help <laughs> complete the pile. Um, I'm excited to see it. Um, how do you feel about some of these other uh, guys lists? Like, um, I like Heidi. She seems very interesting. I uh, like there's Kevin is a pile. Pete is some pile. They're grabbing a lot of spicy picks. A lot of stuff we don't see often. They, yeah. Theirs looks really fun. Like, I, uh, I, I'm legitimately worried about Luke. Um, <laughs> like, if, if he has his nut draws, it's going to be very, very hard to beat. Oh, yeah, um, sweet very powerful but I it, it also is not like I, I don't it, I, it doesn't seem like he has the tools to be consistent enough mm-hmm. to uh, to manage that on a regular basis and um, you know we still have 46 pick or you know yeah. have more picks left so yeah. hopefully I can see him kind of complete his pile yeah I'm just um, uh, like in, in those colors I'm just not sure where he's going to get the, the like filtering to get to yeah uh, like I like I I'm I, I, I he's got you know a bunch of double and triple blue cards, but he's also mm-hmm. trying to play you know th- like three colors in here and um like I, I just don't I'm not sure I see how like Leovold fits in uh, on that I don't and, know and he doesn't have a, he doesn't have much like Sensei's Divining Top is the only like card draw that he has mm-hmm. like if, if he if he manages to get the Citadel which you know. I suppose it's possible that somebody could hate pick it from him. Sure. Um, well, let's get back to you. Yeah. So, the Winter Orb. Yes. How do you feel? I see it. It looks fun. <laughs> Is he going to make the deck, do you think? Um, probably. Like, uh, the... the, the the un, the the breach brain freeze package is so tight. It ju- it just requires so little mana to get started that uh, choking my opponents on mana to until I find what I need is I think is a fine plan on that part. Sure. Yeah. And then obviously with Urza, it's just insane. Um, oh yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of options there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean all your other picks. I mean look like where they should be i mean is for what you want to do i mean i'm excited yeah. to see how the deck works i'm excited you know i know we're not streaming matches but i'm probably still going to be hanging out for a while <laughs> just to see the games i want to see how it all comes how it all works out i'm very excited to check it all it's gonna be awesome yeah I, 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 the, the breach decks are one of my favorite vintage decks mm-hmm. and i know they're a little bit out of favor for uh like the the tinker piles that have like a small breach package in them at this point, but it's still so much fun. Yeah, I I, I was I kind of wish that I was either black or white instead of green for the, for like that just that little bit of a splash because like monastery mentor would be great here, you know, uh, or any of the the black tutors would obviously be great, but it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, well. Good luck in the next, you know, All right. 14 or so picks. I don't know where we're at right now, but uh, I'm excited. I think we got 16 left. Gotcha. It looks fun. Yeah. It looks All very right. fun. Well, uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. Good luck. All righty, folks. 
Hope you enjoyed chatting with Alex. Sorry Heidi couldn't make it down. Uh, her, her foot is not doing super great right now. So we had to, hopefully hopefully the interview was good with Redbeard and we will uh, see what the rest of the uh, rest of the draft holds here. I talked to, I, I ate some food, spoke with Mark um, because he was free. Everybody mm -hmm. else was doing things. Yeah. You know, going through their spreadsheets, thinking about this and that. Um, and, uh, well, this is also the important spot of the draft. This yeah. is where you kind of like tighten up the list mm -hmm. get to where you need to be. So I think a lot of people are diving in, doing their research, figure out where they need to be heading to. Yeah, people were not ready to, to chat about their lists. People were like, <laughs> I gotta focus up. I gotta I gotta figure out what I'm picking and when I'm picking it. So should be interesting. Very excited to see how this falls out. Mm -hmm. People have some some exciting decks, some interesting decks. We yeah. have lost the stream. Very good. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Okay. Hey, all right. All right. Just a little blip. We're back, and we have Fairy Macabre for Redbeard yeah. right off the bat. Hot sideboard inclusion. Mm -hmm. I remember you mentioned he feels like he's going to start looking at some sideboard options. Good. Um, to try and, you know, get what he needs to to survive against some of these more, you know, combo-esque decks. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did hear from Heidi a little bit. Heidi is looking to, you know, obviously loop Mind Slaver with the Emery, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Try to do things like that. I didn't hear about KCI or anything like that, but she was talking to a large group True. of people. That's she was fair. not just talking to me. I'm, so. I'm not going to say it's probably not the most insane thing. Right. I love it, but yeah, I don't know power level wise where it's at. Right. We'll see. I, yeah. I, I have hope. I'm holding out hope in my heart, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She has a chromatic star. I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm excited. It's going to be sweet. Patrick picking up Disenchant. Disenchant. It's just it's a good sideboard card. Sideboard. I mean, there are decks that's going to be really good against. Yeah, I mean, depending on the VRD, I could see main decking a card like this enchant, mm -hmm. you know, De just depending yeah. on the field. Yeah, I think that card's going to be really good against Mark and Heidi uh, when he plays up against them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't think it's quite main deckable in this field, but yeah. great sideboard card all the same. I've played uh, plenty of disenchant variants. I played Fragmentize in the last VRD, or you know, two VRDs ago. I played... Uh, Good card. Abolish, which is great if you have a lot of planes. Yeah. <laughs> not not if you don't. <laughs> pretty bad pretty bad if you don't have a lot of planes, but casting it for free just by discarding it a plane feels so good. <laughs> that's an OG, that's a classic good. Oh yeah. No, I, I that that was that was a card that I just <laughs> pulled out of the depth of my brain. Yeah. I was like, what do I need here? I need a I need a free spell. Abolish it is. <laughs> A lot of other good options. Yeah, I wonder if Kevin is going to go more into burn. I wonder if he's going to have mm. his big dudes, have his you know mid rangey stuff, but also he grabbed Bolt, he grabbed Goblin Guide. He might have went off that road, right away from those, and now is doing his hardly summoning thing. But I don't know. Act of authority for Chad. Yeah, that's a commander control. card. Oh wait, no, no, no. Okay. So that's a three mana exile target artifact or enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile target artifact or enchantment if you do its control or gains control of act of authority. So you you exile an artifact or enchantment, you get another one by giving it away, and then you're not playing artifacts or enchantments really, so all right. Yeah, the only negative I see is he gets two, which yeah. is still good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not terrible. I don't hate it. This um, is an interesting card. I did yeah. not expect to see this drafted. Um, I probably, in my opinion, would have liked Return to Dust mm. over because that still gets your two. Yep. In the same turn, but yeah. I mean, they both do the same thing essentially. Return it's to just, Dust gets it all in the same turn, but does cost four mana. Yeah. While well, this one's one less, gets it over the span of two turns. Yeah. Yeah. And they I mean, both exile, which is important. I'm not against it. It doesn't seem like a terrible choice. Revoke existence. Revoke existence. Ooh. That's the almost disenchant. Yeah. That's the, the sorcery speed exile yeah. target artifact or enchantment. Again, exiling, very important. Sure. Especially against Heidi's deck. Oh, yeah. When she has a bunch of artifact reanimation you know, yes. that she can do. Trash for treasure. Goblin engineer. Doretti scrap savant. 
Uh, yes, active authority, if you can blink it in Commander, does a lot of work. True. Bitter Blossom, sorry, Pete, that's already been taken long ago by Patrick. <laughs> Gonna have to walk that one back. Can't can't have it. It's already been taken. You spelled it right. It's just <laughs> it's just already out there. And we're we're, we're trying to yeah, figure out. I'm interested even in the Bitter Blossom. Why yeah. picked it? Like I don't. I'm trying to see. What are you going to try and do? Just returning to the, the Boomer Jund. Well, Mark, Mark getting Fracture soon, probably. I can definitely see Mark picking up Fracture, a solid white-black card. Something we've talked about in, in one of our... I, I think it was discussed in one of the... the in the first-ever article on the St. Lotus website, stlotus.org. Check that out. Mind Drain. Let's pull this out. Now... Almost. Ah! Okay. So this is a mind rot, but they discard two cards, mill a card and lose a life, and I gain a life. Interesting. Now, in this format, and formats like this, mm -hmm. I find that milling my opponents, if I'm not going to kill them by milling, I don't really want to do it. It could actually backfire yeah. in a lot of these. I mean, Pete is one of the people who got a lot of the reanimate stuff, but... If he mills Patrick, yeah, that could just help him. Bad, so bad it, to mill Patrick. Bad to mill Chad. Potentially yeah, bad to mill Heidi. I right. Think, I think I would have liked a wrench mine or something mm -hmm. uh, in that slot instead. I, I mean, think for the most part they'll still eat the two cards. Some players might just discard an artifact like Mark and uh, Heidi. Yeah. But speaking of Mark, Mark picking up Karn Scion of Urza, fantastic. Very good choice. Yeah, I, he needs that consistency to keep him in the game. Common opponent says, I'd rather have Stupor. I would, too. And Mark and I actually talked about Stupor. Mark played Stupor in VRD number one. Of course, a classic from Which back in Mirage Block and reprinted in Time Spiral. Uh, it's, it's, oh, yeah. It's yeah. a, it's a like mind drop with some serious upside because their first discard is random. random. Yeah, that's very... That matters. Go Blank could be playable in that spot, too. Sure. I think there's a lot of options beyond Mind Drain. I like Wrench Mind yeah. the most, potentially. Graven Cairns for Kevin. Heidi picking up that welder we talked about earlier. Probably going to take another powerful artifact here. And it's Thought Not Seer. Ooh. Mm -hmm. She does have access to a lot of colorless mana, hopefully. I think. She's got the Grim Monolith. Take, take a rewind. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go, go take a look at her list. We've got the Grim Monolith. We've got... Urza Saga. Urza Saga. We've got Grim Monolith and Urza Saga. Yeah. That's that's what we got. Well, I assume she'll pick up more colorless mana later. Yeah. Black Cleave Cliffs Kevin for Kevin. Trying to get his fixing. I think he might be going too much in the fixing. He's only in two color. Even when I play drafts and stuff like that, it doesn't seem like you need that much fixing for two color. I th so one of the things about limited, okay. right, is that you play seventeen lands, which yeah. is too many, because you have no fixing, right? right? And I think that I think that or very little at fixing. You're just playing all these basic lands. Yeah. Um, I think I think fixing is very important okay. in these two color decks, especially when you've got so many double pip cards like he does. A lot of those dragons yeah. are double red. It's true. I agree. Okay. Um, pack rat good. for Mark now. I love pack rat. Pack rat can win the game by itself. I've seen it many times now in VRD. Pack rat is just absolutely ridiculous. And I think Mark has a lot of potentials to draw dead cards, mm -hmm. which could just be yeah. pack rat fodder. Ooh, I've got half of a combo piece, and I just need to beat down. Pack rat, pack yeah. rat, let's go. Absolutely, I like pack rat a lot. I also, yes, Heidi can play wastes. That's true. She can absolutely play some wastes. I think it might be tough to play wastes in this deck that does want to play two colors of mana, but we'll see. Speaking now, of waste, in Pete, VRD, what, do you have to draft waste? No waste. Uh, I think under our current rule set, waste is just free. Okay, that's cool. Um, in fact, it, I know it is, because I was told, I was reminded after my last draft, there was like, hey, you can put Wastes in this Eldrassi deck, and I was like, that's great, I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Waste not from Pete. Waste Did not, so. Stuff. Okay, so he's got the Davriel. He's got the Mind Drain. Might have one other discard thing, but... Run it back. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a little... He's got the Croxa. Got that's the, the Croxa, other. yeah. Croxa, big Wheel of Fortune. He, uh, could, he could waste not Wheel of Fortune, though. Yes, okay, there it is. Yeah. There it is, waste not Wheel of Fortune. That's the good stuff. Yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at. Not not terrible. Yeah. 
It was fun. Sea Chrome Coast for Luke. These right. fast lands starting to pop off here. I think the fast lands are quite good in this format. Mm. They're, they're not fetchable, which is too bad, but they they come down in the early turns and fix your mana and allow you to play spells without coming in tapped, which is very important. Now we'll see what kind of sideboard nonsense Chad gets up to, since that seems to be where he's living. I think the exciting thing about what Chad's doing is he doesn't always need a strong sideboard right. because all his cards are so generic, diverse, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. versatile. I think that gives him a little bit of an edge in yes. a lot of these game ones. Um, yeah, I think I, he has a very good game one against most of the field here, it yeah. looks like. And I mean, even game two and three, it's hard to sideboard against him, too. Right. Because he doesn't do grave, he doesn't do a lot of graveyard stuff. He doesn't do a lot of this. He's just playing good cards and hoping to win off the back of them. What is it? A dismember? Card. Sure. Dis dismember, a solid pickup. Yeah. Willing to pay four life to just kill something as sure. well as a mana. Uh, yeah, I would also that. not be surprised if Mark drafts Paladin class somewhere here. Paladin class is a solid card for these decks. Yeah. Puts a little tax on and then can can really push things forward for you if you have extra mana to spend. But for one mana, it does a lot of work. Uh, Doom Whisperer for Patrick, another uh, a, a cheap 6-6 six, six flying trampler that, that lets you pay life to surveil. Great for setting up reanimation mm -hmm. and just a great efficient beater. It's a yeah, I mean it's a six six for five. I mean that's that's yeah. a good beater. Yeah. It's a solid backup plan for this reanimation deck. I think that's the kind of thing this reanimator deck needs. Uh, it's unfortunate the other doesn't have a lot of disruption, but it's sure. just what it is. And I mean I think that'll make his main struggle against like you know Redbeard, Heidi, little, yeah, a little bit of Mark, but. If he could just get bigger dudes and put in the pressure, sometimes you know. Yeah, he may need he may need some fast mana source, but sure. other than that, you know. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see like a go for the throat, some mm. infernal grass, something like that. Kind of surprised Chad hasn't gone for Dovin's veto. He may sure. still. He he's the only person in this the blue white, like hard in the blue white. Yeah, like, I don't think Luke's going to pick up Dovin's veto, although who knows? But I, I really doubt it. So I think I think Chad may know he can float it till quite a lot later. Yeah, I mean Luke is just kind of struggling in this four color. Yeah, you know pile. So he might not be able to you know get in that Dovin's veto. Yeah, I'm concerned that he. I understand not wanting to build your entire deck around Time Vault, but I am concerned that. He hasn't built his deck enough around Time Vault, you mm -hmm. know? No Fabricates, no Reshapes, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. No Transmute Artifact. Yeah. Tezzeret the Steaker is still out there. No. N there's no Primary Green deck and no Lands deck, so no Nissa, no Ren and Six. Yeah, and no Primary green, green deck means we might not see Carpet of Flowers today, which is yeah. too bad. I don't think Green... I think Green was very underplayed this draft. Yes. I think it was definitely something that everyone just ignored and got rid of. Redbeard picks up Hercules Recall and engulf the shore. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a classic. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, it's the four mana, right? And bounce all the creatures with toughness less than or equal to the number of islands you control. Yeah. So if Redbeard is going to be heavy blue, which we know he is, those two dune lands both being islands as well, engulf the shore poised to uh, make, make Reanimator pretty sad. Uh, poised to put all those dragons back in Kevin's hand, things like that. Yeah. No, not a bad pick. Patrick. I like that Anguished, a lot. Anguished Unmaking, a solid removal spell, three mana to exile a non land permanent at mm -hmm. instant speed. Sure, it costs you three life, but who's counting? Better than Vindicate because, well, instant speed. Sure. Sorcery is hard to, hard to reckon with sometimes. I'm interested to see what Chad is coming up with. He needs like more answers. He, uh, that's all he wants, more answers. Yeah, just. just I think answers. he might need more ways to kill people. I think he's kind of lacking in the "I need to kill you somehow" department. Yeah, but I mean, he could pick up. He could pick up like. Has any solitudes been picked? I think you know. Don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, solitudes interaction and potentially a beater mm. I mean 3-2 lifelinker is not like insane but I don't think it's a super creature heavy format anyway yeah not I this think, draft yeah I think he just it gets Kevin's kind of awkward but it's still removal against Kevin yeah so. factor fiction is fine here I think we might be in the too many main deck card zone now no. I would have liked to see something like a solitude or or potentially a, a celestial colony a, fa a fairy conclave no. something yeah. to close the game out with Botanical Sanctum for yeah, Luke. We need, we need to kill him somehow. Yeah. 
I'm just looking to fix that mana more. Probably leaning away from the black, which is a shame because those three, those three lands or two of those lands are just gonna fall by the wayside right. a little bit. The the bayou and the uh, the underground, not the underground sea, the the watery grave. Yeah, because Pete has the sea. Rather have gush than Foff. Yeah, it depends. I think it's cursed for you. Though. I think Gush would be pretty good. Yeah. I think his curse is pretty decent. Gush is probably better than I'm getting giving it credit for here. Yeah. Turgrid. Turgrid. Whoa. Okay. I think that's it. No, it's a. You you, you had it. Okay. You had it. That's the one. Turgrid got a fright. So Turgrid, of course, here we've got the four or five menace. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-land non-token permanent. Or discards a non a permanent card, you may put that card from graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and then of course that does flip. Does does you can also cast it as yeah, sure. Turgrid's Lantern, three and a, a blue a black cap to make them lose three life, or sack a non-land permanent, or discard a card, and then you can pay three and a black to untap it. Am I missing a reason Redbeard wants engulf over evacuation? may just not want to pass may just not want to cost five yeah i think what pete is doing is he wants to play the front side of turgrid i assume i mean that's just the best side i mean people are calling for it to get banned in commander because of how terrible it is to play yeah. against. so i mean i'm interested to see yeah what he can get off people i've never played against turgrid and commander because I don't want to. Um, none it's of not, it's not a fun time. <laughs> yeah, none of my friends have been like, "Hey, I'm going to play Turgrid in Commander." Yeah, exactly. We don't. We're not. That's not where we're at. Let's <laughs> yeah, all have a good fun time. Like you know, and 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 we you know we, we kill each other pretty early. We've sure, played sure, some sure. 30, 40 minute games. We're not CEDH. We're a couple steps below that. Yeah. But like, and that's how I like my casual games yeah. personally. Just I'm here to win. Let's yeah, let's try to win. Yeah. Let's play to win, but. Also, let's not play to make each other miserable. Yeah, I agree. Cursed, cursed Totem. Cursed Totem. Mm, who's he preying upon with a Cursed Totem? Let's pull Cursed Totem up. That's the act shuts down activation abilities, yeah. Of creatures. Of creatures specific. God, who is he hating yeah. on? I don't see a lot of it. I'm not going to lie. Gristlebrand. But it, that doesn't feel like it really answers Gristlebrand in a meaningful yeah. way. It doesn't seem like it shuts down down people's decks. It seems is that good like against Heidi? Maybe? A couple cards, but again, I don't see it. It stops the Ballista thing from happening. True. I don't I don't know about Cursed Totem. I'm sure I'm missing... I, yeah. I assume I'm missing something, but I don't feel like I am. Uh, DRC and either Spellbomb. Yep. Yeah. Solid cards. Dual Caster Mage against Twin Flame for Got Kevin. Combo, yeah. Just trying to combo off. Do a little little historic combo here. I wonder if he's going to try since he's going this heartless. I mean, if he's going to try and go Kiki, uh, Kiki Zealous. Could be. Yeah. It's a cardboard card. Oh, okay. It's cursed. Cursed to him out of the cardboard. That makes okay. <laughs> makes more sense when you have Karn. I, I forgot about the the the, the Karn. True. The cardboard aspect of things. Either spell bomb, just a great card in this this Goblin Welder verse. I'm excited. I am too. I'm very excited to see what Heidi's doing. Probably Chalice in the same vein as well. Yeah. Mark picks Makes up sense. a Prismatic Ending. Yes! I love it. Prismatic Ending, a great card. No, I think he can only go too high so far. He can, uh, yeah. No, he has Mox Oval, he has Moxes. He, he has, has Mox Emerald, he right. Has he has Lotus, Lotus Petal. Petal. Okay, never mind. He, he can has go Polarian high. Academy. He can, he, yeah. can, he, can, he can go as big as he, yeah. as, big as he wants. Go up to five. Yeah, I forgot about those first like five picks of his. Yeah, yeah. he can go pretty high with his with his prismatic ending. As someone who who I, I also cast, I, I had a, an emerald in my my last VRD mm. deck and was casting prismatic endings for for you know two and three in weird ways. And so I, I yeah, that's awesome. I feel good about this. <laughs> I like I like seeing prismatic ending. What yeah, a great card! That card is sweet. And it's just it's it's so nice to see these powerful uncommons doing work. Oh yeah, I mean, I definitely underplayed it when it first came out. I was like, this card can't be that good. And then I played it in a couple modern locals, and I was like, this card is everything. <laughs> this card's <laughs> unreal, right? They play a Chalice of the Void, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool Chalice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he lost Defense Grid. He, Bridge is gone, too. 
is it, unfor yeah, is, Heidi grabbed the bridge yeah. and the defense grid. Yeah, she's got both of those. So there's there's a little pressure on Mark's Karn board there. He's going to have to find some alternate options because he's going to be missing uh, grid and bridge. Now, I think he still needs to grab his lattice before the end of the, you know, rounds, but I'm sure he'll get there. Did he grab lattice already? Did he not grab lattice already? Uh, he might have. I thought he grabbed it back in the... Yeah, here's Oh, lattice. okay. Okay, I might have missed it. Torok, Dread, Cantor. So uh, Pete really leaning into the discard aspect here. Yeah, I mean... I'm so I'm interested in what Pete's doing. He's been rocking back and forth on different strategies. Yeah. I don't think he's been really committed to anything. I think he's just going with the flow. Seems like he's finally settled in on uh, on this discard strategy here. Two one pro white. Whenever an opponent discards a card, your Turok gets bigger. And Turok with Luris is interesting, yes, because of course you can play Turok from the graveyard and still kick it. Yeah. Even if you're playing it back with Luris. Dark Slick Shores for Luke. So it looks like Luke is hanging on to that fourth color. Wow. Huh? I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, Luke's going to have to take lands for the rest of the draft, basically. But... <laughs> yeah, to get to where he wants to be. <laughs> um, I, mean, I, there's... I mean, I think there's some dual lands that still haven't been grabbed yet. Oh, like... yeah. There's, there's still plenty of... There's still plenty. Of, there's some shock lands out there. Um, there's some of the fast lands. There's some of the pain lands. There's pathways. Um, you know, they're the city of brass, the mana confluence, those are still mm -hmm. out there. There's plenty of lands still in the draft if what you want to do is just not really have a sideboard but have a deck where you can cast anything. That's totally doable. Yeah. All right, we're at Chad. We'll see how his blue white pile is doing. Yeah, I think he needs more interaction. Yep, he needs more interaction. He needs some, some more powerful sideboard cards. Mystic Gate. All right, I, I don't know if you need that. He has Archmage's Charm. He has some double white. Mm, uh, that's true. That's so like, true. he might need to get he might need it to get there. I think he could have waited. Yeah, he had time. I wonder but, if I wonder if he's worried about Luke taking it. But I don't think Luke wants the filter land, no, right? No, I don't think so either. Especially the filter land that requires that you feed blue or white specifically to it. Yeah, and I know people mentioned Vito. Mm -hmm. Still haven't seen a Vito. Ooh. I want more wind guns. I want a Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Yes. I want to, you know, do sweet wind guns. Yeah, I think I think Chad could use another win con. Patrick picking up Grand Abolisher, looking to shut down Redbeard's uh, sure. Stormshell Redbeard uh, for his his part picking up Arid Mesa. No, I mean the Grand Abolisher is just you know probably the anti blue players. Please don't interact with me. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Just trying to play the game. That's what, yeah. You know. Sorry, I I, I swatched with Ether Sworn Canvas yeah, in yeah, my brain. That's yeah. the one. Bane Slayer Angel for Patrick. All right, sweet. Just, a, just a you know, just a solid mid range threat. Yeah, right and there getting some fixing. Mm. The thing about this draft is that with a lot of first time drafters with some unfocused decks, just sticking a five five or a six six flyer is good on five could win you the game. Yeah. yeah, if they don't have a removal spell, just like hey, I've invalidated the rest of the game we've played. Yeah, that's why I'm high on creatures. Yeah. I'm very high on creatures because sometimes people just don't grab enough interaction. They don't grab what they need to do to deal with this stuff. Like, you know, Mason winning with elves. Yeah. What I mean, they were just looking at him as right. they made a bunch and he killed you. Yeah. Like, that was such a fun draft to watch. Just like, <laughs> okay, Mason has come come to St. Louis and defied all of our expectations and yeah. just drafted this weird green deck and just killed us all. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> What have we learned today, folks? <laughs> We've learned that creatures we we didn't we didn't know how we, we thought we knew how good creatures were, were and we were wrong. <laughs> and that's just amazing. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I I think right under the in, in the the rookie VRD pitfalls that everybody falls into, there's drafting too many main deck cards, and then right under that is not having enough interaction yeah. slash undervaluing just the power of creatures. Yeah. A lot of Pentad Prism positivity in the chat. I agree. Pentad Prism is uh, it's a card on the rise in VRD. Especially with Oka. Yeah, you use it, you Oka, and then you make it an elk. You make it into an elk. Yeah. <laughs> Beat down. Ceremonious rejection. Mm. I like that one. Yeah, countering a colorless card. Just shutting down some of these big artifacts. 
Uh, nice to have a one mana answer to a Karn, yeah. something like that. Great, great sideboard option against a lot of decks. I think could. I'm still missing the veto. I'm yeah. still missing the win cons. Yep. I need him. Because the fairy here of Dominary is a win con. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and he prevents you from decking out. Right. <laughs> like, there's so many options he can, you know, land for you. Luke going hard on these lands, picking up Zagoth Triumph. Hex he drinker. picks up Hex Drinker. He's Boomer Jump. He's back to the Boomer yeah. Jump thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we may just see, like, green, black beat down. I, yeah. I, I assume Pete will largely abandon red, but may play that, that wheel. Yeah, way splash on the wheel, yeah. Hex Drinker, absolutely an underdrafted card. One of those creatures that's just like. Hey, if, if it doesn't go unchecked, it will kill you. <laughs> I feel the same way about Rabble Master and Legion War Boss. Oh yeah. If you don't interact with it, it's gonna get out of hand and you're not gonna be able to deal with it. You'll need a sweeper after like two or three turns. And the thing about those cards is they don't require any additional mana investment, right? Yeah. You put them down yeah. and they just do their work. Play and do your thing. Yeah. Hex drinker, you gotta pay more, but it does only cost one to get started. Lodestone Golem coming down. Yeah, I like that. That's a decent option. I like that. I like Rakdos Charm. I don't yeah. think there's any other twin decks other than, well, Kevin's Dual Caster Mage Twin Flame, mm -hmm. but Rakdos Charm still eats a graveyard or destroys an artifact, both things you need to be doing in this format. Absolutely. I think it's a great sideboard card. I think it's going to deal with a lot of different decks. I have also never seen Hex Drinker be bad. It's just a great card. Mm -hmm. It does a lot of work. It deserves to be drafted higher than it is. Nice, like Clonic Rift. Ooh. Ooh, a Commander Legend. Heidi looking to leverage the power of uh, what you'd think would be more fast mana, but isn't. Uh, Tezzeret the Seeker as well. Making sure Luke doesn't end up with that, although yeah, yeah. I think Luke's just on mono land aggro here. <laughs> Master Math 1 6. True. Yep. One sure. six game. I've played Mono Red Prison and Legacy. That's just how it is. One six, you know. Yep. You're, it's probably over. <laughs> Kevin picks up Fry, Fry here. Decent cyborg card. Yeah, I mean, it's a nod to the the blue and white cards. There's some some strong blue and white planeswalkers, a couple of creatures that you want to be able to fry. Mm -hmm. Can't be countered, right? Yeah. yeah. So so gets, which, which will matter. It's very mm -hmm. gonna be very important. Um Especially Chad with very few threats, Kevin yeah. might be able to. He could hit some of Patrick's Angels. He can, yep. you know, Luke Stoneforge Mystic. Like it's not a terrible card against a lot of them. There's definitely a lot of room for Fry to be good. Uh, blows up Athalia, things like that. I'm, I agree with you, Hyphenated. I don't see a lot of creature removal. I don't. I see, un, you know, interaction being very underwhelming. Yes. Except by Chad. I think Chad's the only one who really is like has a lot of interaction. I think Patrick is going to steal a lot of games with Doom Whisperer and Painslayer sure. Angel. He's just going to play him <laughs> and just be faced. And I'm very excited about that because mm -hmm. that, what that's going to do is that that's, that's going to generate a lot of valuable learning for these folks if they do if they do have fun and decide to play more of these, which I hope they do. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody here catches the the VRD, the VRD heat and gets real excited about it because this format is so much fun. Just commentating, I'm very excited. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. When you commentate this format, you're like, "Why am I not upstairs drafting? Yeah, what am I doing yeah. down here?" <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I just, I love talking about things. I just love talking into the camera. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Yeah, the white black deck. It's just, it's it's hard to know what your main deck and what your sideboard is, but the nice thing is you can sort of look at the field at the end of the, at the, end of the whole draft portion and just say like, all right, well, I don't know what other people's main decks are going to be yet, but based on what everybody's drafted, here's my main deck. Yeah, in okay. these matchups, this card's going to come in handy more often than not, right. et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to do the math, oh. make a main deck that's best on average. Esper Sentinel. Oh, I love that card. I, I played this card recently. It did some serious work. Um, obviously, only triggers once per turn, but still, oh, yeah. just 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 very, that little bit. Very good. And he needs it in his, you know, non. He doesn't have a lot of card draw. He's going to need to do something to keep a hand. So I thought Pete had abandoned Blue. I really did. But <laughs> now we've picked up Aether Trade Winds. Interesting. Interesting. A target of Angel. What is that for? What is that he for? Did Turok. 
I think, I think, yeah, it ret he returns yeah. his Turok and something he wants yeah. off the battlefield, and then he recasts Turok or a different discard spell. Um, maybe we go back? Yeah. See, see what we can get from people. Yeah, he can um, bounce. He, he can, can bounce he, his Davriel to reset it. Planeswalkers. Um, he can bounce Reggie if he's done discarding cards, I guess. Maybe Crux, Crux if he has like five mana, but I feel like it's just not yeah. going to mean anything. Interesting. Interesting choice. I'm, yeah. Bounce I mean, Oath of Liliana and recast it. Yeah, I still put it higher than the Leyland, probably. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But. Chad picking up a late treasure cruise here. Very nice. I think he's really the only player who's interested in treasure cruise, though, <laughs> which is wild to say. And I think it's going to put in work. Oh, I think yeah. it's going to do exceptionally well. Treasure cruise is bonkers. Yeah. And, you know, if he hasn't already exiled this graveyard, it, part of his graveyard to dig, treasure cruise, you know, it's, it's just some added redundancy. Patrick living picks up death. living death. Oof. It's not a creature heavy, you know draft yeah. right now I mean it's just going to be good yeah it's just going to give him what he needs right there's That's not awesome. going to be a bunch of creatures in the graveyard yeah. he's going to put his own it's, stuff in the graveyard it's going to be medium against Kevin yeah depending on how the game's going but I think there's still games where Kevin's going to have a full board he's going to living death and swap and it's yeah. going to be very bad for Kevin just absolutely invert yeah. the whole game I, state I, I think like living death yeah I like that a lot I can see living death just being a blowout against Kevin yeah Redbeard getting some fixing <sighs> I think Redbeard's draft is going pretty well. Yeah. I think. <laughs> but I just it's also storm. it's storm. Yeah. So it's, I don't I, it's scary. I I don't have a lot of faith in it. Yeah, never miss it. Niv miss it. Perun, of course that's the the blue, 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 red, 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 Niv miss it. Oh my gosh. Wow. Another commander stalwart, Niv miss it, Perun. Yeah, five wow. five uncounterable. When you draw, you ping something. Whenever anybody casts an instant or sorcery, you draw a card. I think it could matter in a lot of matchups. Yeah. Like, you play it against Chad, I think Chad loses. Yeah. I don't think Chad can beat that card. I think it is. I mean, he removes it, but like, I don't know. Redbeard gets a lot of value. Yeah, I think it's going to be very hard for, for Chad to deal with that. I think this is going to be another card in the vein of Baneslayer and Doom Whisperer, where it's going to, go on, it's going to get on the battlefield, mm -hmm. and it's going to steal the game. By itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, common opponent. I think repeal would be a better choice there, but I like I like where Pete is, is going because Pete Pete's not drafting a deck that we expect someone to draft, but Pete is taking risks and trying out cool new stuff. And whether Pete does well in this for draft or not. I think we're going to learn something. At some point, we're going to learn something. It's and this is cool. his first time, right? Yeah. This is everybody's first time besides Mark and Kevin. Yeah. He's doing his thing. Yeah. And then he's going to see how it turns right. out and goes from there. But okay. I think I think there may be, there's probably going to be something in Pete's deck that we as a group go, oh, why weren't we doing that before? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is yet, but I have faith there will be something. Yeah. Treachery. Oh, Chad. Oh, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> I love it yeah. Chad says that sounds fun I see you I see you big unanswerable I, creatures yeah, I love your Bane Slaying Angel <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> your treachery <laughs> yeah. that sounds fun I like that a lot Hushbringer and Doom Whisperer now that's a combo I mean yeah like I mean Hushbringer says I'm just gonna shut down shut down the board I just tuck trade wins away in the cards to consider folder yeah I mean again this is the advantage of having new minds mm -hmm. on this job. I agree. Death Shadow. Interesting. I don't... I mean, we. Luke has a couple of fetches. Luke has the Git Probe, right? Oh, I'm sad Luke has gone again, away from the unfair strategy. I miss I miss Luke's Time Vault deck. Yeah, I, I think... I think there was something there. Yeah. I think he could have committed, and it actually worked out really well. I think the plot got lost somewhere along yeah, the way, which is I, easy to do in these drafts. It's so easy true. to just, like... There's 46 picks. I mean, yeah. I'm losing track of what people are drafting already. I mean... We've been drafting for three hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he could have done, like, some fabricated reshape, transmute artifact, as you were mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. and could have 
Dundee, but I'm interested to see how his aggressive pile goes. The reason that every time you say reshape, I say transmute artifact, by the way, is because of my first VR game <laughs> where I took reshape when transmute artifact was still available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was, so, okay, okay, here's the reality. Here's the eight of trade wins tech. It's reality oh, acid, God. folks. Oh, we have uh, to keep looking at Pete's cards. This is, a, <laughs> this is a classic, uh, this this I've done this in standard popper back in the day I had reality acid and then the like Talarian or the Vidalkin whatever that allows you to mm -hmm. return to rescue yeah. a permanent I reality acid your thing I bounce it with my my Vidalkin whatever replay Vid reality acid next turn bounce it with Vidalkin whatever and just blow up your permanents yeah. bit by bit by bit and Pete's a commander player yeah so like that's his primary format so all these commander cards we just keep seeing them and I want to see this you know pile of cards. I hope they work well. I'm yeah. really, I'm, I'm rooting for him. The abyss Me from too. Mark. Mark, Mark, continuing to lean into powerful, oh. powerful enchantments Ooh. with nonsense text on them. I love abyss. That, that's so exciting. It's a great card. <laughs> I think it'll do great against some of these big creatures. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> almost ignoring the wary. <laughs> Kevin, almost ignoring the wary. I assume he's trolling us. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But maybe he's not. Maybe he's got something to do. No, it's maybe fat. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe I was Nora waiting for. Playing. I was like, Norn the wary. What confusion yeah. in the ranks? I mean, knowing what we know about his plan, right? Norn yeah. the wary doesn't make any sense. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's, I think I think it was a troll, but we'll yeah. see. Pyrite spell bomb for Heidi. Another great card to recur. Mm -hmm. Just pick off your board or or blow you up at the end of the day. Galazeth Rismari. Interesting. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I like. That sounds fun. At best, it's a big beat. Or at worst, it's a big beater. You yeah, know? And Galaseth turning all of your artifacts into taps for right. one mana of any color for instants and sorceries only. Or is a second edition? Yeah, edition? now she doesn't have a lot of instants and sorceries. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if Galaseth Prismari is going to live up to its its potential. But still, still, you know, ten picks or so left. Eight, eight picks? Nine picks? Something. I mean, it's still a dude. I think dudes are yeah. very underrated in this draft. And, I mean... It's a three power flyer that yeah. makes a treasure. Inferno Titan for Kevin. Great with yeah, that heart summoning. Phyrexian Revoker. Fantastic card that just, I think Mark will probably main deck in the end of the day. Just shut stuff down. And we'll see what Pete. I, there's no way to predict what Pete's going to pick. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's impossible. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, like, I mean, we're gonna have to put it on the screen whatever he puts. Okay. It's gonna be a card where we're gonna go. What is that? What does <laughs> yeah. that do? All right, let's get it on the screen. Okay, uh, what I, is, what most is this? most of them I know. I will admit he got me with mind drain. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I legitimately. Did I, not did, know I didn't know what that card was either. I'm not Granted, I don't know how. I, I think I did like two Zendikar Rising drafts ever on on Arena, arena and that yeah. was it because that was deep. That was deep pandemic time. Yeah, I don't even really remember that part of my life i'll be honest and when i work at the uh my shop yeah i know 99 and percent yeah. of the cards people are wanting because i've right. played so long i've worked at a shop for so long exactly but sometimes they just throw these cards out and i'm like i don't know what that is i've never heard of it. yeah <laughs> it's some random common from Mercadian mask or something i'm like oh what yeah it's a trade wind rider okay yeah, as a former store, you know, card store manager myself, I have that same thing. Where I'm yeah. just like, yeah, I know that card because I know every card. This is my job. I love this card. So I don't know how I feel about it in this format, but I used to play a lot of Ancient Standard with friends yep. and like the Ophidian deck. This oh, card yeah. was super fun. Tradewind Rider used to be just an absolute house, just yeah. an incredible card. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you need a couple other creatures with it, yeah. and most of Absolutely. Pete's creatures cost like four mana, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be hard for Pete to leverage the power of trade with Rider. Luke picking up Assassin's Trophy, nice yeah. late pickup. Um, you know, great removal spell. Just wonder how often it's gonna rot in his hand, right? Mm hmm. I hope he gets a little bit more fixing. I'm worried. Yeah. I think he grabbed a couple good picks. Chad picking up Glacial Fortress. There's the check lands we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I still want to wimp down, or it's his treachery to wimp down. <laughs> I mean, is treachery, that treachery going to take him to the finish line? Treachery is a solid interested. pickup. Uh, Stitcher, Stitcher supplier, supplier, yeah, a good card for 
his reanimator strat. Great way to fill the graveyard. No real ways to sacrifice it, but that's okay. I wonder if we'll see a Hogak from Patrick. Ooh, the Gak. That'd be yes. cool. A reality shift from Reggie, some interaction. I sure hope so. Reality shift, yeah. And Pact of Negation to the turn you combo off. That's the card you want in your hand. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Especially in a combo strategy. Yeah. If you're going to go off, you might as well go off with Pact back up. True. Sure. Wonder, wonder where Patrick's going to go. Undead Butler. Now that's a card from Crimson Vow. That's the two mana, one, two. When it enters, you mill three. Yeah. Yep. When it dies, you may exile it when you do raise dead. dead. Chad picks hmm. up Fluster Storm. Nice. There you go. Nice like pickup. I like that one. That's been on my mental list of cards that have not been picked yet for a while. Uh, along, along with, by the way, Wasteland. Wasteland, sure. still out there. True, but I think that comes from the lack of green. Yes. In the format, I think green does well at manipulating and abusing wasteland. The same with strip mine, and it seems like Redbeard's just gotten away from strip mine. Yeah. He doesn't think it's going to put in what he wants it. There's not going to be a crucible deck today. Yeah. We're simply not going to have a crucible deck. <laughs> Which I'm sad about because Mark is the only one with so many rocks to get around it. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, they need their lands. Yeah. Kevin needs their lands. Patrick needs their lands. If you could build a crucible strip mine deck. This is probably a pretty yeah. good field to do it in. The 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 low to the ground white deck or white black deck is the perfect place if you're not going to be a green deck. Is it's the it's the other place for like yeah. crucible lock. Yeah, you don't need to recur wasteland for it to be good. That is true. And with a lot of just like greedy decks out here, there's some some greedy decks right with some yeah. some like serious yeah. non basic mana bases. I think somebody somebody wants wasteland. I think it might be Kevin. I think it might be Mark. No, we'll common see opponent mentioned Kevin, which yeah. is not. I agree. That's he would be a pretty good one to take a wasteland. Yeah, when you're in that big red strategy, it's often good to do some mana denial. Yeah, I'm sad about the lack of the green staples. No Me carpet too. of flowers. No regrowth. No uh, Sylvan library. We're not seeing those sweet, beautiful green staples that yeah. you know can really round out a lot of. Folks, Thanks. if if you do if if you do your first VRD with friends, take green. Vidalkin Mastermind is the card I was talking about earlier. Yeah. I just couldn't remember the other the back half of its name. And it's, the, it's two mana. the stasis card. Yeah, do a little good stasis things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's perfect with Reality Acid. What if Pete takes stasis? God, what if he tries so. to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if he tries the stasis? I mean, I'm just, I'm Pete's just, living I'm, a dream right now. I'm gonna try to send him a message with <laughs> yeah. my mind. Pete's in his own reality. Okay. I, sh I shaved my head so that I could more easily use my telepathic power, so I'm going to send him a message yeah. with my brain. <laughs> it's not because I was losing my hair. It's because of telepathy. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Leyline of Sanctity, Mark says. Don't don't please don't kill don't, me with Storm. Yeah, please don't touch me with your spells. <laughs> your, your, your evil Storm cards. Get them <laughs> yeah. away from me. Now, of course, Redbeard can still uh, win with Thassa's Oracle. True, right? true. Redbeard still has the, the backup self brain freeze. Not just your whole class against a good card. Yep. Self brain freeze and with the, the uh, underworld the underworld uh, breach. You can I, cast it out. I need a solitude. I really need it. I <laughs> That card's insane. Gadrak, the crown scourge. So Heidi moving in on some uh, some of these treasure synergies. Yeah, that's interesting. Just a solid beater. Oh yeah, no, there's always always cards that shouldn't go undrafted that go undrafted just because people are doing different things. Manifold key, yeah. another way to untap things. Yeah. Uh, with such a vast card pool, I mean, cards are just going to be forgotten about. I mean, and Kevin can't wait. So Kevin things. can't wait. He slams the heartless summoning. <laughs> he wants people to have time for it to sink in. Ooh, and more picks peacekeeper. I love that card too. Oh, no That's... more combat. No more combat for anyone. I love that. Pick. <laughs> I love it. That's gonna blow out Patrick. That's gonna blow out Keith. <laughs> that's gonna just destroy people. I can already see it. No more combat. Luke I'm just gonna helm a, combo you. Yeah. GG. Luke has a decent amount of interaction. I think he could get around it pretty mm -hmm. easily. Um, <laughs> Pete picks up you know. Maze of Myth to go with his island. <laughs> walk, walk. I mean, he had to get eventually, right? Like mm -hmm. he had the he had the walk walk. So he, he had to get the better one. A goy from Luke. Meanwhile, Luke yeah. is. Four four color good stuff. I mean four color creatures. Four color things, sure. Yeah. I mean 
we'll see. We'll see how it goes. At, th- at this point, he's just playing for. He's just, it's just a value game, right? And he's just saying, I have to play in a universe where I can cast all my spells, so I'm just mm-hmm. going to play all the good cards. Yeah, sure. I feel like I feel like he must have gotten like his artifact stuff hated out, right? And just lost his direction. Sure. And just decided, hey, here I am. I'm just going to play good stuff, and we'll make it work. And now, I mean, the cards don't seem to be, you know, drafted. I think he's pretty open to grab whatever four color good stuff he yeah. really feels. Just grab needs. some more lands, probably. Sure. Go back, go back to lands. Like he picked four or five in a row, but I don't think it's enough. I think he needs more. So if I'm correct on time vaults wording, I'm going to pull it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pull up vault. You only, you only have to skip a turn. If you want to untap it, right? If you if you want to untap it the regular way, it's which, it's oh okay, yeah. it comes in tapped. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it'll enter tapped. You can untap it during your untap step by skipping your turn. Mm-hmm. Um, but but you just you just never do. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. It's just it's just it's just it, you never no one ever does. True. Yes, cards like Peacekeeper, cards like Mode, super available in the closing rounds, and when there's no real deep white drafters at the table. Because there's really only room for one deep white deck, right? Yeah. You know. Ooh, you're right about the moat. I have not seen Mark grab a moat yet. I think that'd be really. Powerful. He may. He may grab moat. He may not. Let's so play <laughs> amulet of vigor. Yeah. Oh, well, you gotta turn your time vault into a land. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. There's a lot of work mm-hmm. to do. Sower of temptation for Chad. I like that. Mm. Gta. Gta. Okay. Gta in the white deck was really good for me. Yeah. Now that's a that the Saint Lotus classic meta is one where creatures are much more played. Yeah. So Gta is just better there. I don't think Gta is as good here. Redbeard picking up common deer. All right. It's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of cards to pitch from your hand, but I'm sad Luke was not able to get the Gta. Yeah. He has a Stone Forge. He has a lot of artifact value. I think it could have been good for him, but it's just how it be. Yeah, I expected him or Mark to pick up the GTA. I did not yeah. expect Patrick to grab it. Sure. It's a big surprise for me. Yeah. Sorry. Now now that Kevin's picked the Heartless Summoning, now that Kevin's shown his cards, what does he pick? Oof. Okay, good cyborg card for Redbeard. The collector yes, oof, yeah. Collector Oof. Another, great. another green card that, you know, needs to have a spot somewhere, especially in this vintage draft. Absolutely. It's so relevant. A very powerful card. Null Rod on a Stick. Wasteland, Wasteland for, for Patrick. Patrick. It's happening. Okay, we can cross that one off the list. <clears throat> I don't know that he has quite that much room for uh, for that with all these double pip cards. Chad picks up the scepter. Yes. Yes, with his orange chant. Oh. Wait, no, Patrick got the orange chant. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. that's a bummer. Sad. <laughs> well, he can put a counter spell yeah. on it. Oh, I mean, absolutely, <laughs> put, some, put some sort of interaction there. Yeah. Ghost so quarter for Luke. I don't. Think he can play Ghost Quarter? No, I don't think that's he's in four color. I don't idea. think it's gonna work. No one loves misdirection these days. Yeah, there's no, there's no misdirection yet. No, no one has picked up Divert, one of my favorite cards. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think Divert is great. It's a very late oof. Yes, it's just because no one's really in green, and Redbeard can take these like off green cards whenever he wants. Yeah, Pete, we're at Pete now. What, oh. what card am I looking up? I should be prepared. Okay, just go ahead and just 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 hit the random card. Let, here, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Pete's next pick is gonna be Carry Away. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. Pete has more intention. Evolution yeah. Sage. <laughs> well, that one's for War of the Spark. That's a great Commander card. I think he pulled up the War of the Spark set list, and <laughs> it's just saying like that card's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Over a late workshop from Mark, I like it. Yeah, this I think is, his deck can use it very well. Um, this is the spot for shop yeah. for sure. A scourge of Valtus, yep. the dragon subtlety. Where's the white one? I see the blue yep. elemental incarnation. Where's I need the white one? I'm and hoping I'll, Mark will grab that white one. Yeah, Mark may Mark Mark's likely to grab solitude. Dark I wonder if Pete will grab grief. Dockside extortionist, very good card. <laughs> Dockside extortionist, I love it. So Heidi, yeah. picking up some more treasure goodness yeah. here later in the I, draft. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. The only the only one of these that I'm like meh on is Galzeth Prismari, but oh, heartless and heartless and grief for fury seems rad. 
<laughs> I like Pete. Oh, where's the Fury? Literally the best one they're going on draft. It makes oh, me so sad. Give me a Fury. <laughs> you should I take like ten to go with Black Black. Okay, so it's time for well, welcome welcome to our show within a show. Dan, this is called Dan, Dan. this is called Dan Dan Facts <laughs> with Eric and Darian. Here's a, here's a fun fact about Dan Dan. Well, let's let's go ahead and let's pull up the art for Dan Dan. Go go ahead and pull up Dan Dan. All right, now we got Dan Dan here. Yep. What is the creature? What what is the creature? It is a fish. But in the art, where where what what is the creature? Uh, somewhere in that ocean, but oh, okay. it looks like a bunch of boats. <laughs> okay, right. Dan, Dan, fun fact, Dan Dan, not the boats. There's kind of a vague shadow of a fish there, but but today's Dan Dan fact is Dan Dan is not the boats. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Dan Dan Facts, and now we're back to the VRD. <laughs> There's another Pete classic. Yeah, Bloom Hulk, another great proliferate card four, to go four, with four, his... Four, uh, his his super friends, Batter Skull from Luke Classic. I'm goes not with, surprised by that. Yep, yeah, goes with the uh, the Stone Forge, mm -hmm. and Mark, of course, picking up the Ancient Den. Just you know, having up the up the artifact count a little bit, um, for a <laughs> reason fish that boats. yeah, <laughs> creature fish boats. Absolutely, <laughs> it took me many years to learn. Like as a child, I did not look that closely at the Dan Dan art. I'm like. Why does this say summon fish? This is boats. <laughs> Who did the art for this? Because as a child, I like I knew about Hyaloctorus lemur, where the guy drew a lemur instead, because mm -hmm. he was like, oh, Hyaloctorus lemur, sure, lemur with wings. But it's supposed to be some weird demon. Like I read that in Inquest or something, and I was like, must be the same with Dan Dan. So he just drew some boats, because they were like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yes, divert! There Thank you, go. Chad. <laughs> Slash, can they hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great card. Very good. Very powerful. Yeah. I think, I, I think it's going to matter a lot. Um, recurring Nightmare from Patrick, a commander, ooh, you know. Love it. It's it's really too bad Ooh. that we, we he doesn't have any green and we can't go full Rex, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> you know, you sack your stitch, you play your stitcher supplier, you mill three cards, you play your recurring nightmare, you stack your stitch, sack your mm -hmm. stitcher supplier, you get something crazy back. I haven't seen nightmare work yet either, but I'm just <laughs> one vote is Dan, the other vote is Dan. D Don. <laughs> hey, I'm Dan. This is my brother Don. <laughs> Welcome to Dan Dan Extreme Fishing. I don't know. I don't know what this program is. <laughs> Sorcerer Spyglass. Yes. It's a good sideboard card. It is. I like it, that a lot. Fun fact, it is Sorceress Spyglass, which no one ever knows. Um, and, yep, there we go. And we found it. <laughs> yeah, it is... <laughs> It's not a spyglass that is owned by a sorcerer. It's a spyglass that is possessed of much sorceress power. Right. And horror. Okay. Horror, yeah. Sure. I, I need Chad's last four picks to round out his control deck. I yeah. need the win con. We gotta have we, I, we, something. We got the interaction. I'm down. Yeah. We need the, we need to be able to win game. Yeah. We, we, have need to, a, we have to win the game somehow. We need a colonnade. We need a... I think settled right. Sure. sure. I mean... A board sweeper. Yeah. Good against Patrick, good against Kevin. I think it's going to matter. It'll matter, but... Maybe against Luke, if Luke's deck you know, works the yeah. way he wants it to. It might work against Pete, am I not? I have no idea. I, I don't know what Pete... I, I, don't know what to, I don't know what his plan is. I'm down, though. I I just... I Gosh, I, I hope the, I hope Pete's last two picks are thrumming stone relentless <laughs> rats and just, just completely... Yeah. Completely, completely I, abandons the other actually interesting picks. thing. How does Relentless Rat work in VRD? So the way Relentless Rats and other cards, uh, any any card that says you can have any number mm -hmm. of this, um, our current rules are that you receive 25 copies of that card. Wow, that's now, awesome. Yeah. It used, it, a, a VRD ago, it was infinite. And Kevin drafted Relentless Rats and Thrumming Stone with his last two picks and immediately went to Mark and said, you need to change this rule because this invalidates all mill decks. <laughs> and so the rule changed. To, to, to be 25 because yeah. sanity, you know? I mean, 25 is a good number. I mean, yeah. I I would not be surprised if Pete just, just, just absolutely just picked up those first 44 cards, 
put them over in the garbage and said, <laughs> throw me stone relentless rats, give me swamps, let's go. And I think he would win games just playing relentless yeah, rats. I agree. I absolutely agree. I think he's just going to have some big dudes. Yeah. And they're going to kill Ice Finko. Yeah, Luke's going all in on the four color. Yeah. Pile. Luke, Luke completely changed focus to this four color value deck no. and ha- has has made some real strides in improving it. I'm yeah. very impressed. It looked it looked like the train yeah. might have gone off the tracks in the middle of the draft. He's really salvaging this. I'm very impressed. How does snow work? Snow free? Just uh, like waste? Snowlands, I think our current rule is if you draft, you you have to spend a pick on like snow covered whatever. Like if you pick if you pick a snow covered island, I think you're I forget how many snow covered islands. I, it used to be four. You might now get Infi. Saint Lotus dot org. Because I think what Luke could do here, if he doesn't have to pick snow lands, he can get naturally. Mm. And that's interesting. <laughs> Any number of cards? Okay, yeah. If you pick snow covered island, you get as many. You as get twenty five. Twenty five. Oh, okay, same with the rats rule. Yeah, which is basically infinite. Oh. Burglar rat. It's just it's a it's it's a uh, ravenous rats. Yeah. Sweet. I. I mean, it goes towards the discard theme already. Yeah. It's you know a weird boomer gun <laughs> card already. So like. What did it say? Mark, Mark picked Bright Climb Pathway, and yeah. then he wrote, I hate Stephen Higgins. Now, Stephen, S.P. Higgins in the, in the chat here, was a big <laughs> proponent of Pathways on one of our preview streams. And Mark was just like, I think these are terrible. No one's going to play them. You're 100% wrong. And they've been way better than Mark thought they would. And now he's picking one and just has to simply eat his words. And it is beautiful. <laughs> I'm so happy Mark that's, had that's to pick awesome. a pathway because his silent clearing got scooped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, sorry. He could feel his like, soul leave his body as yeah. he drafted that pathway. He's like, ugh. Now he could have he could have simply avoided this by drafting Caves of Coilos. Mark, you could have just drafted Caves of Coilos. Haunted Ridge, I think, is the new red black land from mid. Right? That yep, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands. KCI! There it is! KCI! There it is! Yes! <laughs> yes! yes! I knew it! <laughs> I'm so excited. Haunted Ridge, an interesting pick. I still think I might have taken Sulphurous Spring over Haunted Ridge. Or like a Dragon Skull Summit or yeah. something like that. Because Dragon Skull Summit is always, for the most part, going to come in on tap two to yeah. game two on. Because you're just going to have basics. Yeah, I absolutely agree. KCI, KCI. sighting. Karn Liberated. Plate Step Pathway. Okay. This is one for the folks at home. Hi, everybody. My name is Eric Levine, and I'm here to tell you about Painlands. Painlands <laughs> came out back in the days of Ice Age, but some of them got printed in Apocalypse, too. What you can do with Painlands, you can go ahead and tap them for a colorless anytime, or you can tap them and pay a life, and uh, you're going to get one mana of one of two colors. Now, this might not seem great, but down at pick 44 or 45, when you're picking garbage like Bright, Bright Climb Pathway, you might want to consider instead picking Caves of Coilos. I'm Eric Levine, and uh, this has been a paid ad by the Panlands Council. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, what's been <laughs> happening since we had that that brief paid advertisement from the Painland Council? Hey, man, this is new. They don't understand. They don't get it. You know, we're past that. We're done with Painlands, okay? That's what the boomers want, okay? <laughs> Glimpse the unthinkable from... Pete, I like it. He's gonna mill, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Luke picking up snow covered islands, yeah, so there, there he goes. Is. That's his twenty five snow islands. Chad Another board up wipe. Cleansing Nova. <sighs> Chad, we need a finisher. How can we win the game? No. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's open. I think he's just gonna try and be like the last pick, let's pick a finisher. Four, I don't know. Forty six need- thick rainbow for you. Let's do this. I, I need something. <laughs> I need something to win the game. Yeah. Woot for snow covered draft in San Luis era. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and we then, got that we got that snow covered island. It's happening. Isolated chapel, yep. No. Another great card. Just a just a solid land. Fixing Patrick's mana here. Very uh very interesting to see Mark and Patrick competing for these lands. I agree. Yeah. Oh man. Two players I'm especially excited about. I'm excited to see Heidi's deck in action. I'm excited to see Chad's deck. Now Chad's deck is just the most frustrating one. Yeah. Oh. I agree. They are both win cons. Yeah, Chad I forgot Chad had Oko. I think we need a little bit more though. 
I think just like a little bit more to get us where we need to be. And he has Caracas click. Sure. Mm, eh. I don't know. Yeah, he's I probably think, fine. I think we need more. But I, I could be wrong. I I'm forgot not... about Oko. With Oko, no. I think he's fine. Just Oko? Oko and Oko and Click. You think so? Just then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. He's All got right. interaction. Okay. He's got Sower, too. He's got he's got Treachery. He's got stuff out of Cyborg. I don't know. I I, I might take a... Yeah. Elaine did lock yeah. several people out in 3 and 4, but that was 3 and 4. I guess this is more like 3 and 4, because there's not as much creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Caracas, Click, Narset will, will just get you. Spire, Bluff, Canal, and Venser. <laughs> we here at the Painlands Council would like to thank Patrick for picking Caves of Coilus. <laughs> Bribery for Chad. All right. There's another one. I'm in. All right. You know what? I'm back in. <laughs> I love bribery. Oh, bribery's fantastic. Yeah. I, when Tron was especially, you know, the best deck in modern at the time, I met a sideboard bribery. Yeah. It was so fun. It was a good time. When, uh, back in like the mirrored and Kamigawa standard days, um, uh, my, my my now wife, who I who I was playing standard with back in back in those days, uh, because we have known each other that long, was playing tooth and nail, and mm. I was playing blue, and so I just had a great time casting bribery <laughs> on her, <laughs> just like just like stealing oh, her creatures yeah. when we were like seventeen. It was awesome, <laughs> or eighteen, something like that. It's a long time ago. I'm old. A relic of regenerative from Luke. Yep. Not a terrible pick. I like it a lot. Tormod script already gone to Luke as well, but there's still some options out there if you want if you want your artifact graveyard hate. There's Crook of Condemnation, there's Soul Guide Lantern, there's the new Lantern of the Lost from this most recent set. There's some good artifact hate or graveyard hate out there. Arc <laughs> Trap, wait a minute. You can't be a mill deck too. You have to do one thing. <laughs> It's Mill Discard Boomer Jund. <laughs> <laughs> classic, classic Super Friends Mill Discard Boomer Jund reality acid combo. Oh, man. Featuring Wheel of Fortune. Mind Stone from Market's a decent yep. deck. I like that. Yeah, just a good rock. Yeah, draws you a card, gets you out of bad situations. In trying, game. To, trying to maximize that balance, cut down the land count. I mm. like it. Especially, he already said he's going low on lands. Yeah. So. He's trying to make it happen. It looks like most of those lands are going to be non-basic. We need the one player that sideboard the Blood Moon. Yeah. Boom. Kevin. That's where Kevin comes in. Okay? Kevin, Kevin right now. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, if you want to kill Luke. I think Kevin right now could get the Kiki Zealous. <laughs> I think he could. Like, a lot of his creatures are good with Kiki. Ooh. Like, I think he has a lot of powerful Kiki targets. Dragon Skull nope. Summit. Just okay. going to fix this. Fix sure. Yeah. Just going to make the mana better. So, no no Thrumming Stone or Relentless Wrath's last couple picks from for Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Mere Moon Vessel. That's the one that when it, it's like the mini Suchi that gives you one mana, yeah, right? That is the one that gives you one mana. Nice. And then, <laughs> a, and then Fob Monitor to yeah. go on the affinity route. I mean, yeah. very good, very powerful. Demanding Dragon. Ulamog, the infinite guy from Mark. Just He's, doesn't just doesn't want to get brain freezed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. He didn't get the moat, but I understand it's not yeah. a very aggressive format right now. Doesn't so need the moat. Seems like even enough. the aggressive decks are all flyers too. Yeah. So I think moat's going to be pretty medium in this anyway. All right, let's see the Pete. Let's see the Pete last pick. Let's see what he's going to finish the draft with. Let's just go ahead and press this button and see if we can get it. <laughs> That's probably not it. Not you even don't, for you Pete. Don't think so? No, I think <laughs> Pete's clear. Pete, I don't Pete know, clearly has a play. blue. <laughs> it's mind grind. He completes the blue black mill trifecta <laughs> of confusion. I think he could have done hideous laughter. Ah, uh, that's three blue, so probably not. But <laughs> <gasps> so get Pete in the bear. Get Pete in the bear. I think. I think we have to. Yeah, I, I mean, think we have to. Yeah, I don't think I don't we have a choice. Oh, Gina, maybe we can sit three people over here. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. We both have to be here. Like yeah. neither of us wants to leave. I, I want to hear this. Uh, I'll, I'll just stand. Here. I'll just stand behind you. I'll crouch. It's fine. Yeah, I'll no, just stand back there. I, by I'm the a table. little shorter. If you all just kind of lean on the table. A little bit, but, oh man. Oh my god. Pete, the MVP of yeah. this draft, in my opinion. Most I think, valuable Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Emrakul, the yeah, Aeon's Turn. Also doesn't want to be brain freezed. I don't think he can play that card. Like, I don't no. think he's ever going to be able to cast no. it. So. And he doesn't have sneak and show yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely. just there to avoid milling. Yeah. 
Interesting. Yeah, I mean, especially with Pete grabbing these late game nil cards, it's that's interesting. I, I wish I love it so much. And folks, as a reminder today, oh, Chad, Chad, Chad Dominari. Ah, oh, yes. Chad did it. Cabal ritual so and our last in. pick, Riptide Laboratory, to go with that. Venser, very nice. Luke, Luke does have channel. That's right. Luke has channel. He oh, could. He did get an early game cool. channel. <laughs> Sorry, Luke went so in, you know, off the rails. Yeah. I forgot he had a channel. I forgot about channel two. Yeah, wow. All right, this draft looks spicy. This is going to be a lot of fun. Gosh, folks, I wish we were going to be streaming these games. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen today. We are just streaming the draft portion, but we will be covering some of the action on the St. Lotus Twitter, twitter.com slash St. Lotus MTG. Go ahead and check that out. Um, but before we go. I, I think I think we would be doing y'all a disservice if we did not get Pete in here. Go grab so so we're gonna, we're gonna go grab Pete and we'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and and get a couple of links here in the chat. So if you want to follow the ongoing coverage of today's St. Louis presents. Uh, Judge VRD out here in uh, in the, the western St. Louis area, go ahead and follow that Twitter account. Uh, Mark and I are going to be making posts from that throughout the day, trying to keep you folks apprised of what's going on. And additionally, uh, Stephen... Mark's just throwing things on the ground here. Hey, Stephen, if you're, if you're still in chat, would you mind linking the Discord? I don't have that link handy. Or hyphenated. Common opponent. Any of y'all who, who have the Discord link, please go ahead and drop that in here. Exclamation point Discord. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you, Mark. Hi, chat. If you don't mind, go ahead and send the chair. Oh, right. have a, have a seat, Pete. Levine. Okay. How's it going, Pete? Doing all right. So I guess my first one of these. I guess we'll have to see what's happening. I am very excited to see what you have going on here. Um, can you tell us more about your deck? Because I, I don't know what you're doing. But I also think it's awesome. That's so tell okay. me. It makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, I came into this looking for. I was looking for either a disc, looking for a discard black green type mm -hmm. of type like type of value deck. Sure. Because initially, what happened was, given who was playing, I figured pick one, pick one, pick three, pick four, and pick eight. We're going to be all going blue. Mm -hmm. And then I knew pick seven was going red. Yep. So that really leaves two people that I had really unaccounted for. Mm -hmm. But Mark, I know, has done this before, so I figured he was going to see what was going on and go from there. Yep. So I was initially going black-green value, so I initially tried to pick things that would help me do that. But the black for the disruption just all disappeared right away. Yeah. So after that, it was kind of, well, I got to pivot and see what we've got. And, say, and I saw there was only, I knew there was only one other red player there. Mm -hmm. So I decided we're going to grab wheel here and see if we can try to do something here. Right. That. But then everything kind of cooled off a little bit. So some more of the discard was there and everyone started going more controlly. Mm -hmm. So we decided, well, let's just go ahead and fix it. We'll go with a kind of a Jun mix here so we can kind of get the red here for wheel. And a braid just seemed to be the right pick at the right time, given where we were going. So I like I that, can, a braid pick, yeah. So I could, then I then after Liliana went, it was like, well, you know, they didn't take all the other discard items over there that I thought were going to go right afterwards, because it all just went right in a row. Yes. All the one drops went, because the one I did not get soon enough was Raven's Crime. Raven's Crime, because yep. I didn't, I, I would have liked to have had Inquisition, but at the same time, when it went right away, I was like, well... Plan B. I can do Raven's Inquisition at the same time. It gives me the retrace, so I can use it too. And we'll use it twice. Yeah, and which I've is been slightly better, but I've been interested in like a Raven's Crime, uh, Life from the Loam type of engine yeah. in this format. I haven't seen it really pop off yet, but I think that would be very cool. So that's where we went there. And then all of a sudden, then it was like, then I got Mind Drain, and then I realized none of the other three drop, two discard items were going. So I was like, well, let's grab some value creatures here and let's try to go back to where we started with. Yep and see if we can get back there and then it was like well we do need to disrupt somehow so i'm not sure if i'm not sure if the discard was going to be strong enough so we decided to kind of take a land destruction spell yep. try to see what we could do with it because i was thinking about either that or ice storm but the others were all three drops because you've got ice quake choking sands and then uh stone rain one of my favorites yep. but i wasn't sure if i was going to go deep into red and it seemed the two drop would be the more the better fit given where my mana base was setting up because it was going to be black and something if I have to go two colors. I and that's how we got the two. sinkhole. So that that's makes why sense. sinkhole came in at the, at the time here. 
I thought about taking the others at that spot, Choking Sands, Rain of Tears, Rain things of Tears, like that. things of that, and then kind of decided, uh, those are three drops. I don't know if that's really going to be helpful, mm -hmm. because that means that's my turn three, kind of having them restart, but it yeah. doesn't necessarily get me an advantage that I would want to use. Yeah, turn three is a very valuable turn, so, I find, in this format, so that's, I think that's a sensible call. So I think turn two... Turn two sinkhole. Yeah. That way it puts them back at turn one to turn two, so I can get a little bit of a tempo advantage there. Take advantage of that, maybe drop, and then maybe get some more hand disruption going there. It buys me the time to get mind drain, reality acid, or something out there in a hurry to try to draw, get some more advantage out of that on the on the field there. Sure, sure. Uh, I want to ask you one question about yeah. one card, mm -hmm. and uh, that card is Island of Wak Wak. How did we how did we arrive at Island of Wak Wak? Well, I was do it? notice one, one issue is I don't have a lot of flyers. Sure. I just got Vampire Nighthawk. I think this is the only flyer I've got, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. So what I needed to do is I needed a way to get rid of flyers, but I also needed to but I wanted to be able to recur it too. So mm. Island of Wak Wak stops the flying thing for at least a creature now. Yeah. And when I wind up playing Kevin over there, who's got a lot of flyers, that's gonna be a problem. Yes. But you did end up with that maze of it but, as well. But I do have, but maze came to me late, and it was like, well, okay, that means I can stop two flying things and try to buy myself some time here so we don't get blown up on. That makes sense. All right, well, I know that uh, chat is a huge fan of what you're, what you're doing. They may not all be sure what you're doing, and that's okay, because it looks like you have, you've, 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 you, you have a plan. You've, 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 thought about, yeah. you've thought about this format, and for your first, it, everybody's got to draft their first time, and, and it's, you've, 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 you're going to do something. And frankly, I'm always happy to see Reality Acid and Vidalkin Mastermind. Yeah. That makes me very happy. Because I, I thought about this, and I was, as I was going, it was just realizing, well, all these things are still here. Right. So we need to take what appears to be the best value at the time and it was like well because i did play some time spiral remastered and i noticed reality acid and Vidalkin mastermind was a lot got me some drafts there oh yeah so it was like well you know and it does kind of get around kind of gets around the counterpart yes yeah so that way i don't have to worry about playing a removal spell and having the counters come out because i've seen a lot of those floating around too so. right so it's like oh yeah i'll bounce my reality acid guess what you get to sacrifice something now yep all right well Thanks for chatting with us. All right. Thanks for having me on there. Absolutely. Good All luck right. today. All right. Thank you. And with that, folks, we are going to, I think we're going to sign off for today. But I want to thank everybody who came out to watch. Uh, please go ahead and check us out on Twitter. Join the Discord. Uh, make sure that you get involved with this format because it's a lot of fun. If you're interested in it, I really recommend it. And uh, we'll see you all next time.